Hey everyone, welcome to my first ever Halloween special. I hope you like the outfit. Um, this year I decided to dress up like an irrelevant YouTuber. The concept of Halloween is so weird. Like, I, how did we get here? I understand how this stuff started with all like the religious things and the Thanksgiving stuff kind of makes sense, I guess. But how did we start this weird ass holiday? Are we such big nerds over here that we have to dress up as random characters from a variety of sources of media? And, and you know, honestly, America is really the only place that does this too. And then for some reason, we have children come up to our door demanding candy. And if you don't give out candy or want to deal with children, again, because they have sticky hands, you look like an asshole. How did this happen? How did we let this happen? And I know there's probably an answer, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because we're here for the Halloween special and we're here to look at the Courage the Cowardly Dog Show. When I did my video on Adult Swim a little bit ago, I got reminded that the show existed and so I forced myself to cram the entirety of the show into a two week period in the hopes that I could somehow finish this video by the end of the month. And here we are, I guess. 102-ish segments of the show re-examined. Courage the Cowardly Dog was a staple of Cartoon Network's original programming. It was a very large introduction to a lot of people in my generation to horror in an animated format, and compared to other cartoons aimed at children at that time, there really wasn't anything like this, which is why I believe it's so fondly remembered today. So, does it hold up? I guess we'll find out as we rank every single episode of the Courage the Cowardly Dog show. I, c I cannot wait to edit this. We interrupt this program to bring you... The new Halloween special where I rank every episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog. Number 102, The Ride of the Valkyries. This episode starts with a family going on vacation to look for a, a bird thing who is said to fly with the Valkyries. They find the bird, but the bird flies away into the sky and finds the Valkyries who are looking for their sister Broomhilda. And they travel down and mistake... Muriel for their sister, making her one of the Valkyries. There's a side plot where the Valkyries declare war on the trolls, but Courage and Muriel find that one of the Valkyries fell in love with like the troll king. Um, and then there's lots of like opera singing, and then they get married, and then they all make up. And this episode is really not good. <laughs> there is so much singing. It is not entertaining. I really don't like this episode. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but... Some people might enjoy it. If you like opera singing, this might be for you. But uh, for now, this is going to rank in last place. It is uh, not one of my favorites. Number 101, Little Muriel. Uh, so this episode starts with a tornado getting announced on the news. And then for some reason, uh, Courage accidentally uh, puts glue on Muriel's chair and she gets like stuck to it. So uh, he, he pretty much unintentionally... Uh, gets her sucked into a tornado because she, she can't leave because she's stuck to a chair. Uh, he can't get her out because Eustace nails her chair to the floor accidentally. Um, the tornado causes her to, for some reason, turn into a child. And you know how I just mentioned not really liking children in the introduction? Their, their sticky hands and stuff like that? This entire episode um, is kind of just centered around the idea that she's a child. It is like having your little sibling just bother you for... 12 minutes. I don't think this is a particularly good episode. Uh, I don't think it's too entertaining, and that is why it is here. Number 100, The Gods Must Be Goosey. So this episode starts off with a giant sky goose god thing, um, seeing Muriel through the clouds and then and falling in love. And then throughout this entire episode, he pretty much just tries proposing his love to her over and over again in this like very Shakespearean way. That's like how he talks um, the entire episode. And then Courage pretends to be Eustace, uh, like actually being a, a decent husband or, uh, you know, a decent human being in general, to be honest, um, so that she'll not leave him to go live with this goose creature. Um, and then ends with U Courage trying to get Eustace's attention by honking his car horn. And then the goose hears the car horn and then falls in love with the car and marries the car. There, there's an absurd nature to this that you kind of have to appreciate, but just the way that the, the goose talks is so obnoxious this episode was just it felt very very long and, and that's that's why i put it here number 99 mother's day um eustace goes to see his mom for mother's day uh, muriel doesn't want to go so he brings courage instead uh eustace launches a plan for courage to uh, hide and like attack and like kill his mom or something um and his mom actually likes courage, so this, this pisses off Eustace, um, as she doesn't really like him. His mom is an asshole to Eustace uh, the entire time, and Eustace tried to give her gifts, but she doesn't like them. Um, 
and, and pretty much ends with them beefing and like arm wrestling to the point where her wig falls off and then she cries. Uh, this, this episode really feels out of place for this show. Um, it takes two of probably the most unlikable characters in the show, uh, Eustace and his mother, who are just assholes, which to be fair, I think they have their place in the show. They can be really entertaining. But having an entire episode dedicated to the two is a, a questionable decision. Number 98, The Precious, Wonderful, Adorable, Lovely Duckling. Just for the title alone, I already kind of just really don't like this episode. Essentially, it centers on the idea of an egg hatching in front of Eustace, and then the duckling in it thinks that Eustace is its mother, and then starts kind of waiting on it hand and feet. Muriel calls it the precious, wonderful, adorable, lovely duckling, like the entire episode. It's really great, not annoying at all. And then the duckling just tries to like kill Muriel and beat the shit out of courage the entire episode because Eustace kind of like wants that. Um, and in the end, uh, the duck tries to like send uh, Muriel to like the moon and then accidentally gets caught instead and then gets sent to the moon with Eustace. Um, so a nice ending, I guess. They get to be together, but uh, yeah, not not one of my favorites. Number 97, Stormy Weather. So this episode starts with like Courage playing outside and then suddenly a lady followed by storms like starts cuddling and playing with them. Um, Courage is kind of scared of her, but Muriel invites her in as like she kind of always does. And then lures, she's like a storm god looking for a lost dog who looks a lot like Courage. Um, this starts with her just kind of mentioning that like, oh, my dog looks like Courage. And then she's like, this dog is mine and then tries to take Courage, so Courage goes and like tries to find um, her dog, and then long convoluted explanation aside, goes into a sewer at a diner, finds a giant bone underground that has tempted the dog so much that it will not leave the bone. Courage also gets tempted by the bone, drills up through the ground to the house with the bone so that he can like bring the dog with the bone to the storm god lady, but the dog is like so obsessed with the bone that he doesn't really care about his owner until Courage makes the other dog jealous by like cuddling with the storm god lady. I don't know, this episode is a lot. A lot of the episodes, I wanna be honest, in the show are a lot. Uh, but this episode in particular, I just don't really enjoy it all that much. Um, I don't really really like a villain or anything. Uh, it's not a bad episode, and a lot of these episodes really aren't, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I don't know, it's like just below average, in my opinion. Number 96, Hothead. So Eustace, starts seeing a commercial for uh, growing hair, and since he's bald, he, he signs up for this experiment. That's kind of a running joke in the show, is that he's he's bald. Courage, like, comes with for whatever reason, and then finds out by observing, like, another random dude in the bathroom that whoever tries the treatment and get, can get, like, very, very angry to the point where they just kind of, like, blow things up. So the entire episode kind of just centers around Courage trying to keep Eustace, who is just naturally a very angry person, uh, calm. Um, and then it eventually... In the end, Eustace gets so mad that he, like, explodes half the house and, like, breaks it, but he grows, like, a singular really long hair. Um, very weird plot. Uh, personally, I just don't think it's all that entertaining, just having to, like, keep Eustace calm the entire episode. Uh, I think there's better episodes, so that's why it's here. It's not a particularly bad one, but not a particularly entertaining one either. Number 95, Rumpled Kiltskin. Um, so Muriel gets a letter saying he, she needs to like, come to Scotland because one of her relatives passed away, who is one of the last to know the secret family like quilt pattern that they have. Um, from there, they're greeted uh, at the airport by the uncle that called Muriel, uh, taken back to his castle, and then he just like m forces her to like make a bunch of quilts for him. Courage escapes um, and finds out his name from his mother that he kicked out of her house for calling him his name. Uh, very, very, like, complicated. I don't know. Uh, essentially, he doesn't like to be called his name, so Courage, like, tries to go, uh, tell Muriel his name, uh, so that she'll get kicked out, like, he kicked out his mother. Uh, and eventually, they play, like, this game of, like, charades, where she eventually guesses the name, and then it, it ends with Muriel being like, you know, you can, like, you can, like, change your name, right? And you're like, I'll just do Rumpled Stiltskin. And that's the episode. I didn't find this one particularly entertaining. There's nothing scary about the episode. Um, the entire episode is just like him figuring out his name. I don't know. It's not super exciting. Number 94, Bad Hair Day. Um, so essentially, there's this secret organization at the beginning of the episode that like needs this blood type called ABXYZ um, so they can get more money. And then coincidentally, uh, Muriel has this blood type. And so a man comes over to offer her a very large amount of money for like research studies that she turns down. And then later they just like go in and kidnap her instead because you know, why, why would you need permission? 
Kurds breaks into this doctor's office to uh, discover like that this guy sold off her information and she's now marked as, as like owned by the secret company. So Eustace and him uh, go together, uh, Eustace to like go get money and then Kurds like actually go get Muriel. Um, Eustace's mom is coincidentally running the place and so it gives a tour kind of like showing off Muriel isn't here um, but then like Courage finds out that she is. Uh, Eustace leaves, he doesn't really give a shit. But then Courage gets caught, they try and sneak in his neighbor and uh, you know a big chase begins and they're just growing like a bunch of synthetic hair in the laboratory, like an absurd amount of hair. Um, and then Courage activates a fire alarm causing sprinklers to go off and like large amounts of hair continue to grow because I guess that's how it's like powered to like plant hair thing. I don't even know. And then um, Eustace's mom's wig falls off which is a common reoccurrence on the show um, and then she just loses and starts crying and then Courage saves through all of the hair that is like now filled in this room to save Muriel. I don't know. It is uh, it's convoluted. It is crazy. Uh, personally, I just don't find it all that entertaining. Uh, it's not personally one of my favorite episodes the villain in this episode uh is i guess eustace's mom but you could like argue the the government secret organization thing i don't know uh i just don't think it's a particularly standout episode it's honestly pretty forgettable and that's probably why i'd put it here number 93 muted muriel eustace and muriel start fighting and after eustace says she shouldn't speak she uh, she just kind of agrees to that and then just refuses to speak uh, Courage obviously wants her to speak, so she goes to the witch chihuahua lady, I think it was named Shirley, who uh, conjures like an evil creature that can only be defeated by Muriel's voice. That way she's like forced to speak and feels like she has like some sort of meaning to what she's saying. Um, and then the starfish like kaiju monster follows Courage to his house. Courage tries to get Muriel to talk, she kind of doesn't. So Courage like lays down in front of the starfish like Tiananmen Square style and uh, before he gets crushed, Muriel yells out his name, causing the starfish to retreat back underground, and yay, uh, she talks again. Um, the entire episode is just centered around the fact that she refuses to have any dialogue, really, uh, which has some entertaining moments, but overall is just, it's just boring. Number 92, Conway the Contaminist. Muriel is cleaning the house when suddenly she sees that it's like snowing outside, so Courage runs outside and found that it's actually a man in a plane dropping uh, flyers about like living a better life. Uh, the man's plane just immediately crashes afterwards in their front yard, um, so he stays there to get better and starts doing like really gross things and encourages the family to like do the same thing and or, like help them live longer by living like fucking slobs. And after a while, like Eustace and Muriel just start like getting like deathly ill, uh, so Courage tries to like take a giant vacuum to clean everything up and then sucks uh, Conway, the, the smelly guy, into the machine and that makes him happy. And then uh, Eustace and Muriel gets clean, which makes them happy. And, uh, happily ever after, I guess. I don't know. This episode this is kind of gross. Uh, it's pretty boring. Uh, nothing too exciting really going on here. Pretty forgettable villain. Um, so that's kind of why it's here. Number 91, The Revenge of the Chicken from Outer Space. So essentially, this episode revolves around the idea that, like, these aliens, uh, come land next to the farmhouse. Uh, but they're just, like, rotisserie chickens. And their whole thing is that they use, like, plungers to take people's heads and then use them as their own. Uh, eventually, uh, after taking Muriel first, they take Eustace and they actually get his head. And then so it's like this chicken rotisserie uh, alien thing uh, with Eustace's head just like tries to like chase Muriel and Courage down. Uh, it's a very weird episode. Uh, not personally one of my favorites, even though it is just extremely absurd, uh, but it's just pretty forgettable. Which in all honesty, a lot of these episodes ranking a lot lower on the list really just kind of are. And that's the main reason that they're here. Number 90, Farmer Hunter, Farmer Hunted. I used to see an ad on TV about like a hunting competition coming up and then just has like an entire PTSD uh, breakdown about like his brother always bullying him as a kid and not letting him like hunt with him. Um, so Eustace is determined to win this competition and then Muriel makes Courage go along with him. Uh, when Courage is out in the woods, he like sees like deers just like being really nice and like playing with each other. And then Eustace obviously just immediately just tries to shoot this family of deers. But then the buck of the family decides, you know, I've had enough with all this, uh, takes a gun and just starts like hunting Courage and Eustace. And eventually that it ends with uh, like a game show segment between the deer and Eustace and then Eustace loses and uh, gets his head put on a car. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's, it's interesting uh, to say the least, I guess, uh, but I don't think it's like super entertaining or notable for the series. And I don't really think it like showcases the strong suits that the series has to offer. Number 89, Watch the Birdies. 
Uh, while outside, uh, Muriel gets kidnapped by a giant vulture uh, so that like Muriel can babysit this vulture's kids while she goes on vacation trying to look for a new husband. Uh, the mother says that if anything happens to her kids, that she'll eat Muriel. So uh, Courage and Muriel kind of like team up to try to take care of the kids. Uh, the kids get hungry, and so Courage goes to like look for a bucket of worms and then accidentally... Uh, puts a snake in the bucket. Now I'm not going to try to explain how that happens. And then the snake tries to eat the babies like immediately. Um, but thanks to like Eustace's ineptitude, uh, he comes up into the tree like covered in honey and uh, feathers after chasing Courage for taking his fishing worms. Um, and then gets like chased by the, the snake. And eventually he's like picked up by the, the vulture from earlier. Like, oh, this is my new husband. And it's actually just like Eustace. Um, personally not one of my favorite episodes, it's just, there's not really a whole lot interesting happening in it, um, but, yeah, oh well. Number 88, Swindling Wind. The family is at, like, this little farmer's market thing, and to get a gift for their anniversary, uh, Eustace, like, swindles the Chihuahua witch lady, uh, that I mentioned a few times, um, out of a necklace, so... Uh, because of this, she casts a curse on the two where they constantly start, like, tricking and, like, beating the shit out of each other, uh, or, like, swindling each other, like, uh, Eustace swindled her. To, like, kind of break the curse, they have to do something, like, selfless for the other one, uh, specifically Eustace. Um, so then, uh, Merely has, like, a toe tick on her foot, and so Eustace was like, oh, put that on my toe. Um, and that's how it ends. Uh, this episode is just, like, really forgettable. Uh, there's not an interesting villain. The entire episode is just them beating the shit out of each other, which I guess can be fun, but it just doesn't really compare to a lot, I think, the other episodes in the series. Number 87, the sand whale strikes. Uh, so a giant sand whale smashes into the family's house and accuses Eustace of stealing his accordion a very long time ago. And in reality, it was actually Eustace's father who uh, stole the accordion. And so the whale kidnaps Eustace and Muriel, and then Courage goes to Eustace's mom to try to get the accordion back from her, and she's just an asshole about it, as usual, uh, and decides, we're gonna chase this whale down with the boat that my husband used to use, um, but Courage is able to, like, uh, as they're trying to, I guess, hunt the whale, uh, Courage is able to just, like, steal the accordion back and give it to the whale. And we get, like, a nice little ending where the, the whale joins an accordion band with a bunch of other sand whales. Um, and that's the only reason that I didn't rank lower, because most of this episode is extremely boring. I do not care about most of what's going on here. Uh, but cool accordion scene, I guess. It's pretty neat. Number 86, the snowman cometh. So the family is out on a vacation in, like, Antarctica or something, and so they're just, like, chilling in an igloo, freezing to death. So Courage goes out to try to look for some firewood and accidentally uh, steals the arms off of a, a very living snowman. Long convoluted explanation aside of some back and forth, uh, they roll into the snowman's cave and his plan is to kind of just steal like human genes and replace them with his own so he uh, isn't able to melt anymore because of uh, global warming or something. Um, Eustace gets his genes stolen and then he melts instead, uh, but then Courage and Muriel kind of escape from the snowman and the, the, the snowman kind of just like freezes in a lake at the end. I don't know, this episode is pretty forgettable. Uh, the snowman does return later on in the series, but outside of like the kind of decent backstory that the snowman has going on, this, this episode is just pretty boring. Uh, but it is a nice change of pace to get outside of the house. This is actually one of the first episodes in the series in which it doesn't take place at the family's house. So that, that was kind of cool. Number 85, goat pain. So Muriel's back is uh, really fucked up. So she goes to the doctor and he says like to go to this specific mountain hot spring to help get rid of her pain. Uh, but there's this goat guarding it who, uh, what was once essentially a hot spring, but is now is kind of dried up because humans are bad. So the goat like just beats the shit out of Muriel and Courage until uh, he eventually beats the shit out of Courage so hard that uh, it cracks a, a break in the wall and reopens the hot spring. And then uh, the goat and Muriel are both no longer in pain. Courage cleans up the goat's mess of porn. He's chill now. Everything's good. Overall, this episode is just kind of like, all right, it's pretty mediocre. There's nothing really super notable going on here. Um, but yeah, it, it's all right. Number 84, Cajun Granny Stew. Uh, so the squirrel fox thing needs a, a granny to win a prize at his granny stew competition. Man, sometimes just talking about these episodes, I, I, I have no idea. Are you guys even following what I'm saying right now? This is... Anyways, so this fox man finds Muriel and Courage at the park, and Muriel is just, like, passed out, so he just, like, takes her. Um, and then, like, this back-and-forth chase occurs, and then he tries to, like, make her into a stew, and it ends up with the fox being made into a stew instead. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's really all the episode is. It's uh, I forgot this episode existed uh, for a while, but it's not a bad one. It's pretty entertaining. It has some fun moments, um, and just the absurdity of it is kind of fun. But just I don't even know. <laughs> Number eighty-three, Bride of the Swamp Monster. Eustace buys Muriel a necklace so that Muriel can put her like favorite pictures in it. But for whatever reason, like I have no idea why this happens in the episode, uh, Eustace is driving and decides like, oh, I'm gonna grab this necklace for whatever reason. Loses his grip on it and attempts to like save the necklace from like his falling out of the car, and then just like drives off the road, crashes into a swamp, and then loses a necklace on top of fucking up his car. Um, Courage is able to get them out, but then uh, like there's, there's a monster in the swamp who finds the necklace with their pictures in it, falls in love with Muriel, hunts her down, and then uh, just kind of like takes her back to the swamp so that she can be his bride. Courage goes on his computer to like research about the swamp monster and finds out he used to have a girlfriend and then flies somehow, I don't even remember how he figures this out, flies to like the country or whatever she's living in and then convinces her to come back to him because she just kind of forgot he existed because she has like short term memory loss. Anyways, uh, Courage takes Muriel home as the swamp man like takes his wife back and they start arguing again because she has like no short term memory. Um, interesting episode. Uh, not really, actually. This episode's pretty boring. I don't really find anything too notable about it. Although, it's not particularly bad. I just don't think that it's really all that exciting either. Number 82, Courage Under the Volcano. Uh, so the family gets an offer for a free vacation to a remote island, uh, where they meet up with the native population who plans to do what we later find out is a sacrifice to calm the volcano god. Um, so they, they pretty much use Muriel as a sacrifice. Uh, Eustace gets caught up in this sort of like relationship with one of the the chieftain's daughters or whatever um, but courage makes a deal with the chief they're like hey if i can calm down this volcano god can you not throw uh muriel into uh boiling hot lava so he's like okay fine and then courage just dives head first into the volcano and uh finds this office with a man whose plan is to like scare off the natives by forcibly erupting the volcano so that he can make a ski resort on their island uh with this like snow device snowmobile machine that he has anyways uh the volcano does eventually erupt the businessman tries to get away on the snowmobile thing uh, but eventually gets like flung off so courage takes it and then just shoots snow out of it and it just calms the lava like it scares the lava away and it just kind of like the lava runs back up into the volcano and he saves out and that's that's really about it um there eventually does actually end up being a volcano god who finds a businessman and just like throws him at the people um, but other than that, this episode is really absurd. Um, I actually do kind of like this one. Uh, the idea that there's just like some random business dude sitting under like this boiling hot volcano. And, and also like in his office, there's just like to make up for the fact that it's probably like at least 500. It's like an oven in there. There's just like a bunch of like air conditioning. Um, cause that, that'll solve the problem, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's just really absurd. Uh, but it's kind of entertaining for that reason. Number 81, Scuba Scuba Doo. So the family is on an island vacation and Muriel and Courage go scuba diving and end up finding these, this small race of fish people like hidden in this coral. So when they get back, they tell Eustace and he's like, this bitch is crazy and he, he can't sleep. So in the middle of the night, he like calls his mom and is like, I think I need to get a divorce. And Muriel is like batshit insane. And his mom recognizes like, oh, this is actually a really valuable coral. I need to go and ransack these people's, this like small fish people's homes. And so she goes, like, into the coral, like, in a submarine um, to, like, go and take the coral. Um, Muriel and Courage end up going back to the fish people and uh, get invited in where they kind of get shown around. But then Eustace's mom attacks. And then so Courage goes to get help from Eustace, uh, who is just, like, searching for metal on the beach. Uh, but he ends up finding this, like, old submarine plane. And then Courage immediately goes and steals it from him. This actually kind of leads to a pretty cool fight scene where Courage explodes Eustace's mom's sub and then, like, saves the people. And then he gets, like, hailed as, like, a hero. Um, the fight scene's pretty cool. Uh, the rest of the episode's kind of, like, alright. Uh, but I like the underwater scenes, and, and the fight scene is pretty decent. So I decided to put it here. Number 80, Laquack Amnesia Specialist. So the episode starts with Eustace accidentally giving his wife amnesia. Um, and instead of actually trying to help her out or something like that, he's like, I'm going to make her my indentured servant. Um, and then so just, he kind of makes her like just do a bunch of random shit that he has around the house. Um, but then this French con artist, Dr. Lequack, uh, comes to her door and poses as an amnesia specialist and essentially just tortures Muriel and attacks the shit out of Courage. Uh, but then Courage eventually uses the computer to call the police on Lequack, who eventually arrest him. Muriel does eventually get her memory back in the end, but overall this episode is just kind of like, eh, it's alright. 
Uh, Lequack's a cool villain, though, and he does make quite a few appearances later on in the series. Number 79, Muriel meets her match. So, uh, a group of escaped convicts park in the family's yard, um, and then this woman named Maria, who looks suspiciously like Muriel, uh, asks to stay and asks very nicely for her personal information and eventually just steals her identity. Um, and then so Maria and her, uh, eventually, as you'll find out, hand husband, uh, go to steal a, a giant diamond. The cops come to arrest Muriel because she stole her identity. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Maria and her hand husband drive by, and so Courage takes the cop's motorcycle um, and Muriel with them so like they can chase after them. And eventually, Courage and Muriel cause the car to crash, and then the people are captured. Um, it's kind of like a, it's a really weird episode. Uh, I'd say the moral of the story overall is uh, don't give out your social security number. That's a uh, Besides to me, uh, you can leave in the comments below. Number 78, Nowhere TV. So Lequack shows back up again, this time offering TV repair services. And when they say they don't need his services, he breaks their TV so that they will call him back. Courage finds out that he breaks their TV, but this isn't before Lequack is able to change the TV to hypnotize Eustace to cause him to really, really like ducks, but really, really not like dogs. Um, and then he does the same with Muriel. Eventually, Lequack is able to hypnotize them into robbing uh, the Nowhere Lottery, in which Courage kind of follows behind them so that he can try to get the police's detention. Uh, Eustace steals the money while Muriel distracts one of the guards by like doing juggling tricks and shit like that. Um, and anyways, uh, Courage breaks into the car, throws out a bunch of handfuls of money to kind of leave a paper trail, and then this leads back to Lequack's base, where Courage is found out, and then Courage and him have this like really cool fight actually, where like objects come out of televisions that they like shoot at each other. Um, but then after that, the, the cops get Lequack, and that kind of ends the episode. I'd say what really makes this episode stand out is that, like, last fight scene with Courage and Lequack. But other than that, this episode is kind of forgettable. But overall, it's pretty cool. Number 77, Fishy Business. So the family is just kind of, like, chilling in their living room, and Courage is playing with his pet fish, when a fish woman ends up knocking on their door. And so she's like, hey, do you guys want, like, a free vacation to come back to your where you came from? And uh, Muriel thinks it's Scotland, so she's like, cool, let's go. Um, but in reality, um, they are taken underwater to a trial for being, like, too human and civilized. And uh, to kind of rehabilitate them, they are given gills and thrown into, like, a fish tank. And uh, essentially, Courage escapes to, like, bring them back up to land. But the council uh, leaves and doesn't follow them after discovering that their initial, like, door-to-door -door fish lady is even more civilized than the family. They're like, this is, this is really a problem. This is living in excess. Um... I'm, I don't even know what this episode's really about. It's kind of entertaining. There's a lot of like really cool scenes. Um, the part where there's kind of like in the fish tank eating fish food is uh, is really it's interesting. Um, but overall, I, I think this episode's kind of a little bit weaker than a lot of the others in the series, but it is pretty entertaining. Number 76, Courageous Cure. An alien species is suffering from a disease which makes them uh, punch themselves. So they go look for a cure on Earth and end up abducting the family so that they can run some tests to find the cure. Now, they do these tests on Muriel and Eustace since their DNA is more similar, um, but these tests actually end up don't working. And uh, Muriel and Eustace get infected with this disease, start punching stuff, uh, start punching the tubes that are infecting them with the disease, and then it kind of just sprays everywhere, infecting the aliens on the ship, uh, as well as getting it on Courage, but it turns out Courage is actually uh, immune to the disease, so he's able to kind of help out these aliens to get a cure because he himself is immune. Overall, this episode's alright. Uh, nothing too bad about it. Uh, not super like amazing or anything like that, but it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. Number 75, Muriel blows up. Um, so a giant missile is launched by the US government and it ends up exploding over the family's house. Um, but no one really notices but Courage, and then in the morning, after this happens, a giant carrot has sprouted in their family garden. So, Muriel is like, oh, this is fine, and takes it inside, and like, it just eats the entire thing. Uh, but Eustace, at the time, is doing his usual, watching the TV, and hears that there's a giant payment of millions of dollars for evidence of a lost U.S. missile. Um, so the government can try to hide the evidence, I guess. Courage also overhears this, and then in this report says that if anyone has just ingested particles from the missile uh, mixed with food, and they specifically mentioned carrots, um, they would grow to an extremely large size before exploding. And so, uh, you know, obviously on cue, Muriel starts growing uncontrollably, um, and then Courage voluntarily gets eaten by her, and then tries to rip this like carrot man like bomb in her stomach out uh, by eating it himself, essentially. So then Courage starts to grow really big and then it's found by the u.s military so the u.s military gets voluntarily eaten by courage and tries to disarm it um and then courage is saved but then eustace just eats it in the end trying to get money out of it 
I don't know. Uh, this, this episode is weird, man. I mean, a lot of the episodes are, to be fair. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, but, like, a lot of these, I guess, middle-of-the-pack episodes is just kind of, like, average. Nothing too crazy. Number 74, Shirley the Medium. So, Courage finds a secret box outside from Eustace's dead brother um, that Eustace thinks has money inside of it, but he has no way to open it. But don't worry, there is a convenient commercial placed within the episode for Shirley the Medium, who comes on and is like, I can help you contact your dead relatives. So, Eustace, of course, hires her to figure out how to get this money. Uh, Courage doesn't want this to happen, as he hears something very scary and bad inside of the box. Um, anyways, Shirley comes over to work as a medium and becomes like a chihuahua telephone at some point, um, calling Eustace's brother brother and uh Eustace is able to get the key even after his brother's like don't open the box um anyways uh, turns out Courage was kind of right Eustace's brother was right uh the box does have like a scary demon thing hands inside of it and then it takes Muriel and Eustace so Courage has to like go and grab Shirley and then she's able to like shut the box but then Eustace opens it again anyways and like gets eaten by the box in the end and <laughs> so I don't even understand what I'm saying I really feel crazy talking about this. Anyways, uh, this episode's pretty fun. Uh, it's not like super great or anything, but I think Shirley is a pretty fun reoccurring character that pops up in the show. In, in the scene where she becomes a, a telephone and is like just ringing with her mouth open for a bit. Uh, gave me a good little chuckle. It's a, it's a fun episode. Number 73, Courage the Fly. So the episode starts off with the merchant guy that you uh, see actually in a lot of episodes. You'll see him a lot later in the series as we cover him. Um, goes up to Courage and just, just turns him into a fly because he's an asshole or whatever. And then for whatever reason, tests another one of his inventions, which is just a giant magnet that is meant to function as his cell phone. But uh, eventually it's just, it just ends up like pulling a satellite out of orbit. So it comes rushing towards their house. And... Courage, obviously, uh, scared about this, tries to tell Muriel uh, that he's not only a fly, but that a satellite is coming to crush the house. And Eustace, seeing a fly, just, like, tries to kill him. The government hears about this and then comes to, like, spy on things and see if they can, like, change the trajectory. Uh, but it turns out they're like, uh, I don't think we can unless there is a conveniently small flying object that might be able to crawl inside of the satellite and change its trajectory. So obviously Courage is like, hey, I'm a small flying object that could get inside of the satellite and change its trajectory. So he does that, um, it crushes the government agents, and then the guy shows back up at the end to turn the government guys into buffaloes. Yeah, I, I don't know either. It's uh, it's pretty fun though, it has some like really tense moments, especially when Courage is inside of the satellite trying to like make sure it doesn't crush his entire family. Uh, so yeah, cool episode. Number 72, Wrath of the Librarian. So this episode starts off with Courage digging in his yard and finding an old book he had completely forgotten to return to the library. Um, so being the good boy that he is, he goes to return it to the library, uh, but the librarian, uh, who is very kind of spooky this episode, uh, gives him like a, a $3,000 overdue fee, which obviously Courage is a he's broke as shit. He can't pay for that. So he just leaves. But because it's the Courage of Cowardly Dog Show, the, the book shows back up at their door and Courage like really scared about it. Um, but Muriel hears about the situation, is like, oh, Courage, uh, we'll help you, like, raise some money or whatever. Um, but she's like, well, since we have the book, we might as well read it. Um, so she picks it up, gets a paper cut, like, immediately from the book. Uh, Eustace picks it up, immediately gets a paper cut. So it's, it's obviously, like, a cursed book or whatever. And then afterwards, it starts turning them into the characters from the story and, like, them acting out its events, which eventually is pretty much just them beating the shit out of each other. Now, by the end of the episode, Courage is able to raise enough money, like a stupid amount of money. She, the librarian just keeps raising the amount of money he owes because he's waiting longer and longer to pay the overdue fee. But yeah, he does get it paid in the end. And overall, I feel like the librarian in this episode really pulls it. Like she is absolutely terrifying. If there is an embodiment of what I thought a librarian was as a kid, it was, it was kind of this lady, like a very imposing figure who was like, where is your library book? Um, unfortunately, the episode is really kind of dragged down by the, the fairy tale subplot that they kind of have going on. Um, but I still kind of had to rank it high. The librarian does a lot for this episode. Number 71, The Curse of Shirley. So Shirley's back for another episode and this time comes to the family's door asking for donations. Eustace being an asshole is like, fuck off, fuck you, leave our house. And so Shirley is like, well, fuck you, and then plays her saxophone and, like, casts a curse on Eustace. Um, essentially, he just starts getting followed around by a giant rain cloud. Uh, eventually, he's forced to sleep outside because, like, Muriel can't sleep because he's getting, like, everything wet. 
uh, but he loses his glasses because he's just covered in rain and like wet all the time, um, causing him to like hallucinate and start attacking people at his own birthday party. Courage is obviously a little bit concerned about this, so he goes back to Shirley and she says, oh, to break his curse, he has to be generous and see himself for the monster he truly is. And it eventually kind of has like a kind of wholesome ending where like, uh, Eustace like hallucinates like a younger version of himself who doesn't have a hat and he's like, oh, I'll give you my hat little boy. Um, which is it's kind of kind of nice like Eustace is actually nice for like two seconds in the series uh, So that's why it's this here. I like that part number 70 forbidden hat of gold Eustace is watching a documentary on TV about a valuable golden hat and coincidentally this documentary has his brother in it And he remembers that hey my brother gave me a map that uh, had like a golden hat on it So he goes and takes Muriel and courage um, through this jungle like on a vacation or whatever to like find this this secret hidden hat temple. Um, they don't know about this at all, but then, you know, they follow along. Um, and then they eventually do find this temple that says like, no greedy people allowed. And uh, you know, regardless of this, they, they enter anyways. Eustace eventually finds the hat, takes it, and then like the entire temple just starts like falling apart. There's booby traps everywhere and like a confusing maze. Uh, eventually they do kind of get out, but are immediately captured by a group of like cult hat members. I, I don't even know. Um, the cult, with them captured, threatens to uh, sacrifice them if, uh, if the hat is not given back. Eustace could not give a shit. He's like, oh, you're bluffing, you're bluffing. And so they take Muriel and like try to sacrifice her to this giant stone, like, god thing. Courage breaks out of like his, his chains and then sees this giant stone monster ritual thing going on. And then so it's like, all right, to, to get out of this, we have to be selfless. So he orders like a bunch of really nice gifts um, to like show off to the monsters and the cult members, which are like these really nice, like very Prada designer coats. And uh, because of their vanity, they all like the, the stone monster falls apart and the, the cult members, like the, the mountain around them, like breaks up because they were greedy. And then in the end of the episode, uh, Eustace is still like a greedy asshole and he just gets like turned to stone. Uh, I don't know, pretty convoluted. It's a pretty like fun Indiana Jones style episode though. Um, so that's why I put it here. Uh, but eh, there's better for sure. Number 69, the transplant. Kurds digs up dirt to help uh, Muriel plant a flower uh, when suddenly he finds bones. An excavation team uh, just immediately shows up out of nowhere to dig up the rest of the bones and then they find it belonged to like this kangaroo monster species. Uh, Eustace takes this opportunity to uh, bid off these bones on his roof <laughs> for whatever reason uh, to all of the paleontologists who have kind of showed up to excavate the bones. Um, and then in this process falls off the roof and then like really fucks up his back. So uh, the, the gang go to the doctor and the doctor's like, we need to find a specific type of bone to do the transplant. So Courage is like, can we use this dinosaur bone? And he's like, sure, why not, I guess. After the transplant, uh, Eustace kind of just turns into a giant kangaroo kaiju monster thing and like terrorizes the globe. Um, and so Courage is like, how do I stop this? And then he goes on the computer and finds that the only way to stop one of these kangaroo giant monster things is to turn into one himself. So he goes and gets a transplant goes to Paris and then uh, they just start like battling and eventually Courage is able to win and save Muriel who uh, Eustace is captured at this point uh, by just like feeding him a bunch of croissants. Uh, <laughs> it's really wild, it's really ridiculous. I don't think it's like as intricate or deep as a lot of the other plots on, in the series but it, it is fun, I guess. Number 68, The Nutcracker. Uh, the family is out in a junkyard just like scouring around for free stuff when Muriel finds a nutcracker that uh, eventually Courage ends up liking. For whatever reason, uh, they, they can't tell that like the sun is setting and so they get locked in overnight and chased around by like a pair of possums. Essentially most of this episode is just a giant chase scene with like music to the nutcracker where the, the, the possums and Muriel and Courage kind of like dance along to it. Um, eventually Muriel gets taken and Eustace has been taken like a lot further in the episode, but uh, Courage finds them and the possums have put them over like a boiling pot of food to like cook them. And then there's like a nutcracker th themed fight scene or, or something similar to like that. Courage frees them, they get out of the junkyard. Um, I think this might've been a Christmas episode or something. Uh, either way, it's fun in like a really dumb way, but like the fact that the entire episode is like really just a giant chase scene takes away a bit for me. There is just a lot of scenes in this that are just like music and dancing and chasing but it is kind of dumb fun so I, I do enjoy it number 67 cats under the sea 
Muriel hears an ad on the radio for a vacation for those who are overworked, and she feels like she is a representative of this group of people. And so, uh, the gang goes on a submarine voyage owned by cats, and after appointing Muriel to, like, tea duty, uh, she discovers uh, this bad-smelling tea called tea... NT. Um, she innocently tries to like report this to cats, like, "Hey, do you know they, they have this like TNT on your on your ship?" Um, and he's like, "You you dumbass!" And just like throws her in a cell. And he's like, "I'm trying to blow up the ship." So Courage launches himself to the surface to try to get help with this issue, and then uh, like does this really convoluted plot to get this news reporter's attention and to get the military's attention, and eventually this this works out. Uh, Cat's plan is like thwarted, and uh, you know the the day is saved. Um, it's it's. It's an alright episode, there's nothing super crazy happening here, um, but Katz is probably one of the better villains in the show, so he definitely helps bring up the mood of this episode. Number 66, Family Business. So a burglar breaks into the family's house to like steal food and stuff, and in the process forces Courage to tie up Eustace and Muriel. The burglar seems like kind of crazy and confuses Courage for a man called Nigel, and then asks him to untie Muriel and Eustace, thinking that like, oh, this is actually my family, this, this is my aunt and uncle. So when he hears the cops, for whatever reason, uh, who, who eventually do show up, he there's kind of like a switch flipped in his brain. He's like, oh, this isn't my family anymore. And so he tries to like hurt them or whatever. But then that, that switch is flipped later on in the episode. And then it leaves him being like, hey, hey, gang, hey, family, we got to we gotta plan another crime again. Um, and so he, he plans to steal Lincoln's face off of Mount Rushmore. Um, and so the, the burglar called Basil um, goes there with the family and like climbs inside of Lincoln's nose after he hears the cops coming. Um, and then they come with like a giant finger to try to pick him out of Lincoln's nose. Um, anyway, so, so Muriel is like, please courage. You have to save him. I can tell he's a good man. Um, so courage eventually is able to like help, uh, Basil out of Lincoln's nose. Um, and M Muriel gives him a good talk down and convinces like you got to change your life around and it ends the episode with him be becoming a, a licensed eel massager. I I do not know what the people on the show were on when they made this, but uh, <laughs> it's entertaining at least. Number 65, Laquack Balloon. Uh, Laquack is back, um, this time with a hot air balloon and he just lands it near the family's house and hatches a plan uh, to like switch out Muriel's cookbook secretly so she needs like the special type of Swedish vinegar and you can only get in Sweden so he, he uses it to like convince her to go on like a hot air balloon voyage to Sweden so that she can get this vinegar for her recipe because you know she loves to cook or whatever um, but anyways uh, Lequack just like leaves uh, Eustace and Courage behind and then uh, his actual plot is revealed in which he is going to attach Muriel to a bungee cord off of the hot air balloon to go to Sweden to rob it with Muriel. Um, he doesn't tell her this, uh, but he essentially just, they get there, he like dangles her down over the bank and like just asks her to, like, to bring up um, the, the handfuls of money from the Swedish bank um, under the guise that it's like leaves and that the vinegar is under it. I, I really don't know. Anyways, uh, the U.S. general that they have stationed there just, like, shoots the hot air balloon down, and then, uh, Courage is able to, like, catch Muriel. Uh, that, that's really all the episode is. It, it's, again, another one of these episodes where it's just, it's so odd. It's so fucking wacky. Uh, but it's entertaining, at least. Number 64, Invisible Muriel. So Courage is digging outside and finds a, a big blue gem. And because, you know, he's Muriel's little bitch, he's like, hey... I got you this little gift. So she wears this this gem as a necklace, but it causes her to actually go invisible. Turns out later in the episode, it seems like the government is looking for this. So they break into the house and uh, take Muriel in for an investigation. Um, Courage uh, goes with Eustace to the doctor so they can like hopefully figure out a cure. And, and in the process, the doctor has Eustace like go invisible to start like testing treatments to see like what they can do to like turn Muriel uninvisible, I guess. But at the time, they find out that dog food that Muriel was making is the cure for this invisibility for whatever reason. Um, so Courage and Eustace go on a mission to find her, but Eustace gets distracted by like this government gold room. Anyways, Courage is able to break into the facility, um, finds her, gives her a bunch of dog food that she made, um, and then gets her out of the government facility. And then at the end of the episode, uh, Muriel ends up winning like a dog food competition with the, the, the food that made her uninvisible, I guess, visible, you could say. Um, 
but yeah, uh, interesting, interesting episode. Number 63, Tulip's Worm. So Courage is outside and uh, playing the tuba for whatever reason and discovers a small friendly like worm in the ground. At the same time, a group of teddy bear looking alien things uh, looking for a worm ass Courage if he's seen one. He's like, oh, I don't know, man. But they then they threaten him with like a giant space laser. So he kind of is forced to give the worm away. But after the teddy bear aliens try to like snag the worm, it pops out of the ground like Dune style and eats them as well as Muriel. So like Courage is trying to figure out this problem and is like talking through the stomach of the worm to the teddy bear and, and Muriel to like figure out how to fix this issue. Um, and they say, well, we got to get back to like our home planet. So Courage lures uh, the worm back onto the teddy bear spaceship with the tuba and then they're able to like fly to their home planet and then they, they figure out that like the teddy bear as well as this worm are owned by this giant blue alien girl um, and you know upset over the fact that the teddy bears her pet teddy bears are being digested as well as like Courage is upset that Muriel is being digested he like dives in to the worm to like save them from being digested by throwing like a peanut butter and jelly uh, with vinegar that Muriel had given him earlier into the episode into the stomach of the worm uh, so it'll like throw up everywhere um, and from there Courage steals the teddy bear spaceship with Muriel and uh, they, they go home yeah again another one of those ep what the fuck is going on I don't know uh, it, it's a pretty fun episode though um, the parts with the tuba and stuff like that there's just like so many convoluted like alien bits of technology uh, that they make some some decently funny jokes out of uh, overall, not one of my favorites, but it's definitely an entertaining episode. Number 62, The Clutching Foot. Um, Eustace gets Burger King foot fungus that eventually uh, like swallows him whole and replaces him with like a giant foot fungus mob monster. So, uh, you know, the, the mobster foot like tries to like rob a bank first, eventually robs a train, and eventually like, you know, see, we, we gotta steal Florida. Uh, I really... Anyways, um, Courage uses the computer to, like, find out what the cure for this foot fungus is and uh, finds out the cure is dog saliva. And this is why the episode doesn't rank higher, as I think the plot is funny, but the episode ends by him having to, like, lick the foot until it shrinks back to normal again. I know there's some freaky-ass motherfuckers over there at Cartoon Network. I know you knew what you were doing. You knew what you were doing. Um, and for that reason... That's why it's 62 instead of like 42, all right? Number 61, Squatting Tiger Hidden Dog. So uh, the episode starts off in China where this Empress's magic silkworm like floats away and the one dude uh, with glasses who like laughs kind of funny in every episode uh, says that to be able to like communicate with this worm and to get it back, she needs to use the bones of innocent people. <laughs> for some reason um so you know obviously of course the family is going to be involved and they're visiting the great wall of china so this guy uh blows a giant bubble to like take muriel away to the empress to have her bones extracted uh courage follows the two up this tower to the, the empress but it gets kicked out into like this noodle shop where he has his fortune read in a bowl of soup and then starts like martial art karate dog training uh to like become a better spiritual version of himself and by the end of the episode, he's, he's like, straight up just like kills the evil empress. And then uh, the noodle shop lady who trained Courage turns, she's, she's been like turning into different things the entire episode, but she turns from like a, a bug back into the real empress to like reclaim her throne, um, bringing back the magic silkworm thing, which was very important for, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, <laughs> very odd, entertaining episode. Um, I, I do like the Karate Kid sort of like subplot though that's going on. Number 60, Mission to the Sun. Miro receives an invitation to a timeshare, but uh, the timeshare is actually just like outer space. Um, so they're essentially sent on like a government mission to try to stop the sun from like burning out. Um, but a parasite like worm ghost thing infects Muriel and starts like controlling her actions, um, turning her green and like having her eat stuff. Um, Eustace, <laughs> who's just like, chilling in there, ends up flying off the ship and gets like lost in space, like gravity, uh, George Clooney style. Uh, anyways, uh, Muriel eventually gets her head stuck in a toilet somehow, and, and the, the parasite get kind of, like, sucked out through the toilet. Uh, after this, uh, the gang is able to, like, land the, sh the, the ship on the sun to, like, change the, the light bulb in the sun so the sun doesn't go out. Um, but their ship melts in the process, so, uh, Eustace is able to float by on a meteor and, like, lasso Courage and, and Muriel back up, uh, back up so they can go home. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know either. Number 59. A Thousand Years of Courage. 
Uh, if you thought those last episodes were like batshit insane, this one this one is something else. So essentially, a giant asteroid hits Earth and spins them a thousand years into the future with the entire house being buried. Um, so Courage is like, I'll dig us up to the surface. And they find the planet is inhabited by banana people. Um, and before Courage is able to like figure this out, he, he tries to eat like a baby banana. And so essentially, he's just like trying to eat babies. And so the police obviously are like start chasing him. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? But then there's like a random dude in an alley like sees that he's not a banana. He's like, yo, here, I got you. I'll give you a banana costume. Um, so after this, uh, Courage, like trying to figure out what's going on, goes to like this banana rally, I guess, and like finds their banana leader. Um, he's like, the Banana Republic needs to march to Banana Hala. And so anyways, uh, the banana crime dude from earlier, while like Courage is like waiting to go to Banana Hala, gets like, it just throws courage down a toilet and eventually this this toilet for some reason like leads to uh banana hala where he finds out the inside of banana hala is just a, a giant ape who eats bananas um and eventually uh courage is kind of able to expose this and finds out the leader is like a monkey in disguise like leading the bananas to their death so uh in the end all the banana people kind of like band together to attack the big ape and the leader and uh turn the two monkeys into like a circus act yeah th this episode is like batshit insane but it's it actually has a pretty decent plot um and outside of the banana thing like, the idea of courage like accidentally eating a baby is just is, is just so absurd <laughs> number 58 shadow of courage um this is actually the first episode of the series and to start it off there's like this old man in a tower who eventually dies and his shadow becomes like sentient for whatever reason and so obviously uh, because it's the show, uh, the shadow goes to like terrorize uh, the family home, in which at the end, uh, Courage is able to like talk to the shadow dude and kind of convince him like, hey, chase your dreams. And he's like, I really want to be an actor. And so Courage helps him like go into outer space because I guess that helps him chase his dreams for whatever reason. Uh, anyways, uh, th the plot for this episode is actually like pretty nice. Um, the main thing that detracts from it is because like it is very early on in the series as a whole and they were still trying to figure stuff out. Courage ends up talking like a lot and I think that kind of detracts from his character um, because personally, I really like the parts where like his charm where he just goes like, arr, 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 all the time. Um, I think it really adds a lot to his character in the show as a whole. Number 57, Robot Randy. So this robot space society and there's like this little robot named Randy who is seen as a failure in the eye of his, eyes of his peers because he doesn't like want to destroy things. So Robot Randy is kind of like exiled from his society and, and lands on Earth next to their farm where uh, he turns the gang into slaves essentially. So to free the family, uh, the courage like ha has like a dance off with Randy, which is it's a pretty fun scene with uh, courage eventually uh, winning in the end and is able to talk Randy down and convince him like, hey, you really like whittling reindeer, don't you? Um, you, should, you should like do that and like sell that. And then so uh, Randy is accepted by the colonies again for his amazing uh, ability to whittle reindeers. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the dancing is really fun, really cool. And the plot is another ridiculous one, but uh, it adds to the charm. Number 56, Cowboy Courage. This episode starts out with Muriel reading uh, Courage, a bedtime story about cowboys, in which Courage eventually like drifts off and falls asleep and dreams that he's like a part of the story as the new sheriff in like a dangerous town. Um, and all of the residents are like really worried because a criminal called the Whip is like known for being uh, a, a very evil criminal in the area. And in the story, the, the bartender, kind of played by Muriel, uh, who's actually is named Minnie because you know, they have to make it different tries to comfort courage um, And they go together to like the governor's office and eventually see that the whip has returned Which is actually just like Eustace anyways uh, courage is able to beat Eustace by like calling in a piano drone strike uh, And then after that everyone's like, oh, this is the best sheriff we've had ever and uh, everyone loves courage I don't know this episode's all right uh, for me I think what kind of sells it is just seeing courage dressed up as like a little cowboy. I don't know Call me call me a beta male, but that they shit kind of cute number 55 profiles in courage um, So the family is at a carnival uh, when they walk by like this old man's tent who makes paper art He convinces the family to like take one of his art pieces of Muriel and Eustace and when taking them home Courage notices that the paper portraits are like moving and shit and eventually when they get put inside of the home the paper portraits like pop out of the frame and merges with Eustace and Muriel like ripping the organs and like essence out of their body and just like leaving the skin it's actually a pretty horrifying like image 
Um, but either way, um, they, they kind of just live their lives like normal, like nothing has happened. Uh, but since they're paper, like paper Eustace and Muriel keep like breaking themselves, like ripping their limbs off. <laughs> yeah, uh, the paper copies kind of grow frustrated about their fragility. And so Courage fixes them uh, by turning them into like a kites and different like folded origami style objects to like make them happier. And then after like the paper versions of Eustace and Muriel are made happier, um, they return the, like, the organs or like soul of the real Eustace and Muriel back to themselves, um, giving them life again, while also giving the old man who kind of made the paper creatures back a piece of art and kind of makes them feel like, oh, my art's actually alive. It has like happiness and meaning. Um, kind of a nice plot, I, I would say. And it has like, it has that certain like scary elements, especially with the fucking like just their souls getting ripped out. That was something else. Number 54, Courage Meets the Mummy. Uh, so a random dude shows up at the family's door like, beaten to all hell and says like this this mummy rose up and attacked me because he suffered a very bad death involving like getting blamed for stealing cookies so essentially uh the mummy story kind of like is shown up on screen in which muriel is shown as like this empress and eustace is shown as like this evil scheming guy called like a poobah anyways courage goes to the computer and it tells him like if you use past life hypnosis to bring out the memories of Eustace and Muriel uh, from their past lives, because I guess they were those people, it can help the mummy find peace. So the mummy comes to their house, um, and then Courage tries to stop him by reenacting this thing, and eventually uh, Muriel exonerates the baker mummy of his past crimes so that he can kind of rest easily, and then uh, Eustace gets like trapped in the tomb with the mummy because uh, he was the original guy who, t who stole the cookies and put the blame on the mummy guy. Yeah. Number 53, Night of the Scarecrow. So the gang are out driving around uh, when suddenly a scarecrow lands on the hood of their car uh, from being like carried by like this giant storm of crows. Uh, Muriel takes the scarecrow back home to like try to fix it up. And after she fixes it up, it starts just kind of like moving around. But the scarecrow gets kind of like bummed out that it's like really shitty at scaring things, even though it's supposed to be, and kind of gets jealous of Courage's ability to scare things very easily. And for this reason, the, the scarecrow starts to like, he does like a, overnight dopamine detox so that you can become an alpha male and then he, he rolls up like all giga chatted out and uh like beats the shit out of eustace and courage and uh takes the time to just start protecting muriel courage goes in to like try to take muriel back from the scarecrow man leading to a chase in which uh the scarecrow eventually just gets like the shit beaten out of him by crows again um and then he realizes like hey maybe i don't have to scare things maybe i wasn't meant for this and uh, be becomes like an attraction at a carnival. The plot for this episode is actually, I think, pretty decently interesting. Uh, the Scarecrow character, I think, has its fun moments. Although not one of my favorites, uh, I think it is a very entertaining episode. Number 52, Courage versus Mecha Courage. So Courage is just like chilling around, chilling on a boot outside when like the, the, the merchant man tries to use his like machine to play fetch with Courage. Yeah, but Courage isn't interested, so he's like, Courage, you're a lousy fucking dog. I can make a way better machine version of you. And so he does. And this mecha version of Courage is very helpful around the house and kind of outdoes Courage in almost every way. Um, so Courage is like gets really jealous after the robot sit, starts sitting on Muriel's lap and uh, wants to fight him. So in a very, like, I guess, John Henry scenario sort of situation, uh, they go to the Roman Coliseum for whatever reason so that Courage can fight the robot. And then the robot just, like, beats the ever-loving shit out of Courage. Like, beats him to, like, an inch of his life. But after, like, beating him up for so long, its battery runs out and it just, like, explodes. And uh, Courage is declared the winner and sending everything back to normal. This episode is pretty alright, pretty entertaining. The Roman Coliseum scene is just... This is really ridiculous, but it is it is pretty fun. Uh, the fight scenes that they have going on and the ways that uh, the machine is just able to beat up Courage are, are pretty creative, and I think add a lot to the episode. Number 51, The Quilt Club. Miro goes quilt shopping to get some supplies and notices that, hey, you guys have a coat club. So she goes up to like ask the merchants of the store about it and is greeted by this like two-headed pair of sisters who uh, say that she needs to bring in samples of her quilting before she can be allowed inside of the club. They continuously kind of just reject her samples until she starts to grow like very weary and exhausted. And that, at that point, they eventually invite her into the club. And so for like their first meeting, uh, the sisters come over and ask Muriel to knit what Courage finds out is like an ancient symbol for everlasting life, which have made the sisters like somewhat immortal. So they want Muriel to knit the symbol into their giant quilt. And when she does, she starts to become part of the quilt until she's like sucked in entirely. She like 
loses all of her memories and stuff, and is like greeted by all the other previous victims of these sisters. Courage in an attempt to like try to get her out, uh, knits part of his own skin into the quilt, which is pretty metal, and it kind of like pops in on the other side of this quilt realm, um, causing Muriel to remember her past life and pop back out of the quilt. And when this happens, the quilt is like ripped apart by like this magic energy stuff. Uh, the sisters are instead captured by the quilt and all of their previous victims are released. And so there's just like this living room full of like ancient people. Really interesting. It actually has like a pretty engaging plot, has some pretty scary elements that I think do well to define what this show is all about. And overall, I thought it was, was very entertaining. Number 50, Mondo Magic. A magician starter box randomly arrives on their doorstep and Courage immediately opens it and starts using it. Big magic fan, I guess. Courage accidentally seems to have summoned another magician in the process though. This magician starts doing like all sort of fancy tricks on the family and uh, eventually puts Eustace inside of the TV and then turned Muriel into like an alien creature thing um, so she can be his wife. Courage calls a doctor to have him like try to figure out how to get Muriel back into like a normal human being, but he says, oh, this can only be countered with magic. After this happens, uh, the magician turns the doctor into like a head of lettuce and kind of just leaves Courage on his own. After multiple attempts of trying to figure out how to like counter this magic, Kurt is able to kind of like BS his way through the magician's magic and is able to get Muriel back to her normal self and turn the magician into a rabbit. This episode is like pretty fun and entertaining. All the magic scenes that they have going on are, are pretty ridiculous and the scenes that Eustace gets in because I think at the end of the episode, if I remember correctly, he's still like in the TV. I don't know, it's, it's a very fun episode uh, that doesn't really take itself too seriously. The one thing that does kind of detract a little bit for me is that like the alien that the magician turns into and eventually is trying to turn Muriel into is like extremely ugly. It, uh, it bothers me a little bit, but that's, that's par for the course for the show. Number 49, So in Louvre Are We Too? Uh, the gang goes to the Louvre and accidentally gets uh, locked in after closing because Muriel really wants to see the Mona Lisa. That night, however, uh, Venus and Mars align and for some reason that, that causes all of the paintings and sculptures in the Louvre to come alive into like a sort of Night of the Museum style episode. Uh, the Mona Lisa and the Thinker are like two lovers, but the Mona Lisa likes the Thinker way more than he likes her. So after Miro gets stuck in a painting of the Mona Lisa, Courage is like trying to resolve their relationship so he can figure out how to get Muriel back out. Eventually Courage is able to get another statue to fall in love with the Mona Lisa to kind of lure her out and then is able to use the painting to capture her back and then pull Muriel back out of the painting. Although not like a super scary episode or having like a giant leading villain or whatever, I think it is a pretty creative episode and as a guy who's a big fan of the Night of the Museum uh, series, uh, pretty good. Number 48, Son of the Chicken from Outer Space. So there's this three-headed chicken alien thing that's like sent by its mother to Earth solely to beat the shit out of Courage. Um, they crash land on like the family's property uh, on their chicken shed and immediately start trying to kill Courage. Um, there's lots of really overly complex attempts to kill Courage by the chickens. And in a final attempt to beat Courage, the three chickens beat the hell out of themselves and show Courage eventually and explain why they're trying to beat him up. So Courage, being a, being a sympathetic, nice, nice guy, uh, is able to help them out by staging some pictures of them beating the shit out of him um, so they can go home happily to their mother. You know, this episode has a little, has a little heartwarming ending there, uh, which, which makes it always nice. And although you could be like, oh, this is just another episode where I beat the shit out of Courage, well, they do it creatively, and I think that's uh, kind of what gets it so far. Number 47, Cabaret Courage. Uh, the gang is walking around Hollywood when suddenly they fall down a sewer drain that is made of like this organic meat. And uh, at the bottom of this this very long organic meat tunnel, um, there's a club lounge. At the bottom, they are greeted by like this big gross monster alien dude in like this fishbowl um, who says, oh, the, tonight you are the entertainment to the family or whatever. Um, and so they kind of have to put on a talent show. With each attempt from Eustace and Muriel, the guy offers them um, like a prize. Um, and they both end up losing or send down like this this mysterious shoot on the stage. The monster eventually wants Courage to go up, um, offering him like a lot of prizes, but all Courage wants is his family back. So he is allowed to make this deal if he performs. And for some reason, Courage's performance is to just like act like Tarzan and like swing by like the ceiling's intestines. Uh, eventually uh, falling on the piano uh, on stage, breaking through the floor into like the stomach of whatever this creature is. Um, also finding that Muriel and Eustace are like being digested. So eventually, right after this, the monster like goes on a little exposition dump and is like, I'm so disgusted by people's lusts and desires for their dreams. 
I just wish people are more selfless and just make me bitter and angry because of society or whatever, right? But Courage is able to like get the get Muriel and Eustace out of this dude's stomach. And the, the monster is so impressed by Courage's selflessness that it fills his heart with joy. Or, uh, in other words, it gives him, like, a heart attack. Like, he, he legitimately, like, dies from a heart attack. And so Courage is, like, forced to, like, get his heart working again. And, uh, once he does, the monster, like, retreats back into itself, um, cleaning up the club and leaving, like, this very nice man in a tuxedo saying, like, oh, I got turned into an ulcer from my own stomach. And, uh, thank you. I'm very optimistic for the future if there's more people like you. So, kind of, kind of a wholesome end. A little cliche of, like, Oh, selflessness is the answer all along, right? But uh, overall, I think the plot of this episode is, is still really pretty strong, especially for a kid's show. Number 46, Mega Muriel the Magnificent. Now, I will be a little biased here because this episode focuses on probably one of my favorite side characters in the show, the computer. Now, the episode starts off with a recap from the computer of all like the past villains in the show, but suddenly a storm occurs at night causing lightning to hit the house and causing all of the electronics to become electrified and this electrification causes the computer to gain the ability to to like walk around sentiently for whatever reason so the computer uses this new ability to upload his consciousness into individuals and eventually takes over eustace and then finally muriel and from this the computer controlled muriel has a plan to shoot itself through like the moon uh, to like prove how brave it is and do like all these dangerous stunts um, But through every single extremely dangerous stunt Mega Muriel is, is very surprised that Courage continues to like try to help and stop him despite being scared every single time After Courage is able to save computer controlled Muriel from like an electric surge that would have kind of just killed him He eventually decides to stop doing these stunts and says like oh I'm too tired for this, but he has a lot of respect for Courage I don't know, as somebody who's who's one of favorite characters is the computer in the show, uh, I do like him getting more screen time, and uh, it is kind of like a wholesome, nice little message, you know, you don't get that too often in this show, I guess, I don't know, but good episode. Number 45, Uncommon Cold. Muriel is extremely sick and sneezes out this hallucination message from a group of imprisoned slugs. They say, hey, if you want to like get rid of this cold that we cast on you, you have to come free us and we'll be able to help you out. So Muriel and Courage go to the bayou where the slugs are located and they are told that the they have like the small magic spell that they had stolen from this evil snake like Baron Samedi guy and they used it to cast a cold on Muriel so they can hopefully translate and get their message out there um, that they are being imprisoned by this this Baron Samedi snake dude who makes them make like giant clones of himself out of his shed skin. Uh, pretty pretty messed up. Uh, but either way they say, you know, if you can get the rest of the snake magic man's book, uh, you can reverse Muriel's illness. So Courage is able to steal this book and cure Muriel, but the snake uh, notices that the book has been stolen and confronts him uh, before Courage is able to free the slugs. The snake chases Courage until Courage um, turns to a page that says like specifically how to take control of like these snake clones that the slugs have made and from there um, Courage is able to use the snake's venom to like activate them and gets the, the clone puppet things to attack um, the snake man and Muriel is able to free the slugs, they're able to go home happily ever after. This episode was pretty entertaining I would say. The plot is probably more interesting than I'd say the villain, although the villain, like Baron Samedi snake guy in this, is fairly entertaining. I will give him that. The, the chase scenes with the snake guy in this episode are pretty tense and definitely help add some uh, excitement to the episode. Number 44, Food of the Dragon. Uh, the gang is having a, a seafood sundae, so Muriel is like decked out in pirate gear and stuff for whatever reason. Uh, but while they're eating this like pirate-themed dinner, Courage notices like a dragon trying to eat them outside of their house. The dragon, like, eats Eustace and then starts, like, chasing Muriel around. Um, so they try to, like, talk to the dragon down and, like, learn why he's doing this. And they learn he's, like, unable to fly and he wishes he could. So before eating Muriel, Courage makes a deal that if he's able to figure out why the dragon can't fly, uh, that the dragon won't eat Muriel. So Courage runs a bunch of tests and flying methods and, like, tries to help train the dragon. But unfortunately, uh, the dragon is unable to really fly at all and then so the dragon starts ca chasing courage and muriel till they all land in like a lake and then muriel and courage jump into the lake water and find another dragon this time it's like a water dragon and so the initial dragon finds out oh i'm not a flying dragon i'm a water dragon uh you know after like swimming in the water to chase them 
and then uh, tries like eating fish, and he's like, oh, this is great. This is way better than humans. Um, so he doesn't want to eat humans anymore, so he regurgitates like Eustace and shit. Um, this is a pretty fun and entertaining episode. I like all the little training montage moments with uh, with the dragon being trained by Courage. And the ending is kind of nice. Number 43, Campsite of Terror. So this episode starts with the family out camping. Eustace is uh, doing his own thing, just watching TV when uh, he gets lured away by money into the woods. Courage kind of freaks out about this because uh, right after this, Muriel gets taken by like a pack of raccoons while Courage goes to save Eustace. So he comes back to the camp. She's gone. Um, so he goes trying to find her and finds her in a cave with the raccoons just chilling out watching TV and they kind of all like cuddle up together but like the, the raccoons don't really like courage so it's a, it's a bit of a dysfunctional family dynamic going on there. Eustace also finds the cave and uh, at the same time also finds out that there is a bounty out for these raccoons. They're, they're little criminal scum. So he captures them but Muriel begs courage to help them out so courage makes like a giant scary mama raccoon like cut out thing to scare Eustace and then he drops like the net that they're in and saves the raccoons and and all that stuff nice little bonding moment this episode's pretty nice uh it has a little twist and turn a little, little plot twist there uh with the raccoons actually being pretty chill pretty cool and, and a nice little heartwarming moment number 42 night of the Weremole. So Muriel is out in the garden just like picking carrots and stuff like that, um, and she sees like a rabbit, so she wants to she wants to give the rabbit one of her carrots. Uh, without her seeing though, uh, the rabbit just gets absolutely demolished, and then like a demon weremole, I'm guessing, uh, thing, comes up and bites her hand and causes it to like swell up. Um, everything is pretty fine, pretty chill, and then suddenly there's like a full moon outside, and Muriel starts transforming into wh whatever this is. They try to take her to a doctor, but she kind of just goes like primal and just eats him. Uh, so Courage goes on the computer and tries to find a cure, and he finds out that the only cure is to find the hair of the weremole that bit you. So Courage, like, dresses up as a rabbit to try to lure the weremole back out, and also kind of gets bitten, and then Eustace just plays, like, whack-a-mole. At the end, uh, Courage is able to get the hair uh, from the weremole thing, and then cures Muriel. Overall, I think it's a pretty good episode. Uh, they make Muriel look pretty scary. Pretty basic plot, I would say, but it, but it's done. It's done well. Number 41, Journey to the Center of Nowhere. So, on the start of this episode, we find out that there is a drought in nowhere, which, to be fair, there always looks like there is one. Anyways, this causes the family's well to dry up, so Eustace wants Courage to dig a hole to find a new one. The camera kind of suddenly pans over, and we realize that one of Muriel's eggplants is actually just a camera operated by an underground secret society of eggplants. While Courage is digging, he finds the secret society and then tries to infiltrate it by wearing this eggplant costume and they mistake him for like some sort of messiah. After this, they, they sort of tell Courage their plan to just like kill Muriel. And so he's like, no, 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 you guys need to prepare. You guys need to, you guys need to be prepared to launch this sort of attack. So they play like this game of Simon Says. When they're kind of get fed up with it, Courage is like, no, no, no. Muriel isn't the enemy, it's grocery stores, because they sell you out, they, they pimp you out. At that same time, he's found out to be wearing a costume, and so the eggplants go kind of crazy. But then Courage finds out that the reason that they're kind of like this is because they don't have any water, so Courage is able to find some water to fix the well, and then the eggplants, like, chill out. They, they like, they took, they took, like, a fat hit, dude, and they just, like, melt into the ground. I don't know what it is with, like, uh, fruits or vegetables in this show, but whenever they're involved, they have to be sentient, it seems, and... It just leads to these really weird plots. It's a fun plot. Don't get me wrong. That's why it's up here. Um, but I, <laughs> I just was not expecting it. Number 40, King of Flan. So uh, the family's just chilling out watching TV at night when suddenly like a commercial comes on to hypnotize them to buy this new product called Flan. Courage is asleep, so he doesn't get hypnotized. But Muriel and Eustace start getting like super obsessed with this, this Flan product. So they go to the store. When they get to the store, they realize there's like barely any left because everybody else saw this commercial and it's already gone like batch insane. Over the course of the episode, they begin to like gain more and more weight um, till they look like they belong in like my 600 pound life. So Courage tries to like look into the flan and like where it's produced and stuff to figure out kind of what's going on. Courage finds out that like the head of flan is using hypnosis for his advertisements to get people to buy the product, but he himself gets hypnotized in the process of finding this out, but he's able to fight it to fight the flan man. After like a really long chase scene, Courage throws up on him, causing the man to, to slip off of like a cell tower and fall down to like almost his death. 
uh, but he gets hypnotized by his own ad. Uh, Courage is able to make like an anti-flan uh, hypnosis ad and runs it to cure Marilyn Eustace. Uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty wacky plot. I really like the villain in this one. He just he just looks very mischievous. He looks like he has something up his sleeve, which to be fair, he did. But overall, I think this episode has done pretty well. There's definitely an absurdity and uh, some funny moments in there, but the flan guy adds like a little bit of horror elements to it that kind of makes the show what it is. Number 39, The Sandman Sleeps. So a character called The Sandman who helps other people sleep is upset because he can't get his own sleep. For this reason, he breaks into Muriel's house and takes away her ability to sleep so he can get his own sleep. Kurt spends a lot of his episode just trying to get Muriel to fall asleep, but this does not work because she physically cannot, and so eventually ends up driving around to kind of help her drift to sleep when he finds the Sandman's tower. Courage asks the Sandman to help return Muriel's sleep, but he refuses to until Courage is able to find his like lost teddy bear under his bed, making it so the Sandman can sleep again. So, for this reason, the Sandman returns Muriel's sleep and she, she gets some nice good sleep. This episode's pretty good. Uh, the Sandman as a character is a pretty fun one. He, his design, I think, looks pretty decent. And uh, there's just like a lot of like cozy vibes to this for whatever reason, just because the whole episode centers on like chilling out and getting some sleep. And it's not like amazing or anything, but like I do find it to be a very enjoyable episode. Number 38, Curtain of Cruelty. This episode starts with like a giant laser ray going over the countryside. Muriel and Courage are doing laundry together and Courage uses like all of the fabric softener uh, that they're they need, so Muriel needs to go to the store to get more supplies to be able to make her own. Now, while they're just chilling out in the butcher store, everyone suddenly turns into an asshole, um, and the city kind of just devolves into chaos, and Muriel's arrested that she can be reformed into someone cruel, while Eustace, already being an asshole, is like elected mayor for just like being himself. Courage is able to remain unaffected from this like uh, evil, mean Ray, and runs away from the cops who are trying to reform him as well. Courage is able to find the man responsible and realizes that like the fabric softener he, he poured all over himself makes him resistant to being like hard and, and, and cold and, and mean. Courage is able to sabotage this, this evil ray machine so with this like fabric softener so it starts shooting out kindness rays um, and pretty much just returning everything back to normal. This episode, uh, I think the horror is done pretty well. It's not anything like super scary or anything like that. Um, but the plot, I believe to be pretty interesting. Uh, Eustace being elected mayor is a pretty funny part of it because he just this is an asshole and everyone's like, oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Um, but then he, I think he gets arrested at the end, if I remember correctly. So that, that was a fun scene as well. Uh, but overall, I, I just like this episode. It's not particularly great or anything. There's no, like, super amazing villain. Uh, I think the villain of this episode is just, like, a side NPC who's kind of in the background of a lot of other episodes. But overall, I think the plot really makes up for any of its shortcomings. Number 37, Feast of the Frogs. This episode starts off with showing, like, the dry desert. Um, and, and there's a bunch of frogs, and they need to migrate to find a new pond, as declared by, like, their frog king because their, their pond is dried up. So the frogs like wander around and they, they find the family's house and start just kind of like appearing everywhere before entirely taking over the home and demanding that the family makes a pond. Eustace, Muriel, and Courage are forced to help them make this pond in like their living room and are also forced to start acting like frogs. Once all like the construction and stuff is, is done, the, the frog king declares the pond open, which comes with like this really cool uh, dance sequence, which, uh, which is pretty fun. The frogs like cover courage and honey so they can attract a bunch of flies so they can like prepare them for a feast. And a lot of this, this honey is put onto Muriel and Eustace so they can attract a bunch of flies as well. So I think they, they're planning to like eat them. Courage launches a plan to use like wax paper to help stick the frogs to the ceiling while using like the honey and flies from earlier. And then he grabs all their tongues and like like flings them out into the middle of nowhere with like like a whatever whatever this is called like David used to like take down Goliath. I'm not I'm not like a history expert like that. But anyways, a pretty pretty fun episode overall. I'm a little biased. I like frogs. Frogs are pretty cool. Um, the dance sequence really pulls a lot of weight for this episode, and uh, the ending I think is, is pretty fun as well. Just it's, it's a pretty fun time. Number thirty six, human habit trail. So Muriel is like cleaning out the home and she realizes ah, I, I could really use a new vacuum and so you know obviously coincidentally a vacuum salesman shows up at their door to sell them a new vacuum now this gerbil man has this vacuum has like screams coming from it and so courage is a little a little worried about that uh and before he really has any time to act on that the, the gerbil dude just like sucks Muriel and eustace um into the vacuum kind of with the idea that, like hey courage i'm like freeing you man you, you can do whatever you want now um, and inside of this vacuum is like a lint pocket dimension thing where they, Muriel and Eustace get made to be like really small. 
The Dribble Man brings Muriel and Eustace back to his lab to kind of run some experiments on them, and then we get like a really cool chase scene between Courage and the Dribble Man where there's just like only the scary, creepy ass music. And uh, Courage is able to save Eustace and Muriel at the end of the day and defeat the Dribble Man. But yeah, just that scene in particular, the chase scene, uh, just the, the atmosphere in it is just, it's just really like haunting. I don't even know how to put it. Uh, but overall, this episode is actually a little spooky. Nothing terrifying or anything like there, there has been on certain episodes of the show. Uh, but I think the Dribble Man makes to be a good villain. Number 35, Record Deal. So surely the Chihuahua Witch Lady is doing like some spring cleaning, stuff like that, when she finds a Velvet Vic record and throws it, like Frisbee tosses it out of her window and it coincidentally just lands right into Eustace's car. Eustace uh, brings the record home and while playing it on his vinyl, he summons like, I don't even know if it's like the spirit of Velvet Vic or just like straight up is Velvet Vic. Either way, uh, Vic and Eustace start doing a little, little grooving and uh, Vic has Muriel like start playing the, the piano and they, they're all like dancing together. Uh, but as she's playing, uh, Muriel is like sucked into the record player and like becomes part of the CD. So because of this, uh, Vic, I guess, has been trapped inside of it and just breaks the record. So, you know, Muriel can't get out and he just kind of dips with Eustace to go on tour. Courage attempts to fix the record at home with like tape and then tries to like get it fixed at the doctor. Uh, but each result of this kind of comes with her coming out either like disfigured or not like herself. Courage goes home and like talks to the computer and is able to digitally copy the record to fix the issues so that Muriel will like come back out normal and then goes to the concert that Eustace and Vic are putting on to find Velvet Vic. At the concert, Courage runs into the Chihuahua Witch Lady who's like, well, Velvet Vic is back for whatever reason. I wonder what that has to do with. And then she's able to tell him like, hey, if you want to switch Vic and Muriel so that he gets put inside of the record, you have to play the record while Vic is playing the same song. And Courage is able to get this accomplished. And then Muriel like goes on this crazy piano solo and is able to win over the crowd. The plot on this episode is uh, it's pretty banging. Uh, overall, a lot of fun dance, like, music scenes that aren't obnoxious, like some of the, the earlier entries that I, I digged on. And Velvet Vic is a character I think is, is a pretty entertaining villain. Number 34, Aqua Farmer. The family goes on a trip to, like, the SeaWorld clone, uh, but instead of orcas, they have, they have dolphins. So the main dolphin of the show starts, like, splashing the family a lot, and Eustace gets pissed, so he challenged the dolphin to, like, a swimming competition. Eustace loses terribly because he's racing a dolphin in water, and so Eustace demands a rematch, and as part of this bet, he signs Muriel into a contract where she has to be the sidekick of the dolphin if Eustace loses. Muriel and Courage are obviously pretty worried about the idea that she's just going to have her life kind of signed away, so they start heavily training Eustace for the match next day. Unfortunately, during this, uh, Eustace gets injured and wants to, like, to step out of the race. So Courage disguises himself as a psychiatrist to help Eustace get motivated through hypnosis. It works and Eustace like pops out of his own skin like a butterfly out of a cocoon and just becomes super strong. And from this, Eustace is able to win the race after Courage accidentally hypnotizes the dolphin and it explodes and kind of just turns itself into a fish. Kind of like how Eustace turned into a younger version of himself, uh, I guess. But like a baby dolphin isn't a, a fish. I don't know. Uh, this episode's pretty wacky, pretty wild, pretty pretty wet, and uh, yeah, I really like it. It's pretty entertaining. Seeing Eustace kind of get to be the hero for one episode is a nice little change of pace, um, even if at the end of the day, most of the time, he's just still an asshole. Number 33, McPherson Phantom. So, the, the gang's chilling outside their house when a bunch of weird things keep happening to Eustace, and he believes that Muriel is kind of the cause for it. Eustace calls up his mom and, like, asks for a therapy session because I guess she's, like, a semi- licensed psychiatrist, I guess. Really bad one, though, uh, because the therapy session goes terribly. So Eustace goes outside to just, like, chill in his truck. I was out just, like, chilling in his truck. Um, his mom is, like, finds a ghost in their fridge and is able to figure out that the ghosts are trying to get revenge on Muriel for, like, her ancestor shooting one of her relatives. And uh, Eustace's mom, being, like, an absolute dickhead, is like, well, let me get on this. Let me, let me torture Eustace as well. Courage, though, is actively trying to help resolve their conflict, so he goes on the computer to get a psych psychiatry degree. And after uh, talking out their problems, Courage is able to get Eustace and Muriel back together, but Eustace's mom decides to intervene. She's still very much caught up in this, this plot with the ghost to, like, try to get revenge on Eustace to get back at Muriel, uh, but Courage is able to use his, his newfound psychiatry skills to show Eustace's mom a Rorschach test, and she's like, 
goes to a therapy session where it's revealed she was actually the one who hurt the ghost relative, and so the ghost starts taunting her and just leaves Eustace and Muriel alone. This episode actually has some like kind of spooky scenes in there, at least for you know kid show standards. Not as bad as some of the other episodes, but we'll get to those. Overall, though, I think that the plot is entertaining. There's some fun scenes, especially with Courage like being a therapist. Um, and overall, com like all these factors combined, make this episode I think really entertaining. Number 32, Courage meets Bigfoot. So Courage like sees some stuff going on outside, but Muriel is pretty unconcerned about it, so she puts him in charge of guarding a pie that she leaves in a windowsill that that's kind of like that classic cartoon thing that they do for whatever reason. But while Courage is watching this pie, I try to watch over it, a monster comes up and eats it. At the same time, there's an announcement on the news that there's a bounty out for Bigfoot. So Eustace starts hunting for him, and an old lady at the same time comes to the door looking for his son, and Eustace pretty much tells her, like, just to fuck off. Courage, after seeing this happen, was like, goes about his day and stuff like that, <laughs> walks into the kitchen, and Bigfoot's just, like, chilling there, and Muriel's, like, making him a pie and stuff. Bigfoot and Courage, like, start having beef there for a second, so they have, like, a food fight going on, and suddenly, they're all, like, covered in fruit, and it turns into, like, this fruit-based dance number where they're all, like, dancing and shit like that, and then they become friends. Probably one of my favorite scenes in the episode. It's great. Eustace, who has gone out hunting for Bigfoot, uh, is able to bring an angry mob back to his house to take Bigfoot's bounty, uh, but the old lady from earlier that he told to, like, screw off, uh, Turns out that's actually Bigfoot's mom, and so his mom takes Bigfoot home, and they, they go happily ever after. Bigfoot as a character um, walks this very fine line with sometimes being kind of a spookier aspect of the show, and also just being like really well just animated and ridiculous. Um, I, I think he just serves as a very fun character, and especially when him and Courage become like friends afterwards and have the dance scene and stuff like that, uh, it's, just, it's just a goofy episode. Number 31, Windmill Vandals. The windmill on the farm stops working and causes kind of their power to stop working as well, so Eustace goes outside to fix it. While Courage is helping Eustace kind of repair the windmill, he notices that whenever the windmill stops, like this creepy fog starts to reach towards the farm, essentially. And so for that reason, he obviously doesn't want the windmill to stop for pretty much any reason. So for a lot of plot reasons, the windmill is constantly being stopped over and over again, and it eventually leads to a group of four undead horsemen uh, attacking the family. Courage does his best to try to keep the windmill running manually and accidentally discovers like a secret set of ruins on it. So after researching them on his computer, he realizes that the men who are like attacking them are a group of old vandals from like 200 plus years ago who wanted the farm out of jealousy of the windmill because they had water mills and all the water dried up. And so the first owner of the windmills engraved these ruins on the windmill to keep these people away. The family's heads get cut off in this episode. Like there's a, a nice back and forth like game of hot potato between all the three family members heads until Eustace is finally able to fix the windmill. This episode I think does a really good job in making like these four horsemen dudes pretty scary and uh, the part where they get decapitated, like the family gets decapitated, that caught me a little off guard. Uh, but they made it comedic with uh, the whole switching heads back and forth thing but overall just a, just a good episode. Number 30, Angry Nasty People. So this, this movie director named Benton Taran Teller uh, makes a return this episode, and by return I mean we'll talk about his first appearance later on, um, and he's making a new movie called Angry Nasty People. He asks Eustace and Muriel to essentially uh, be giant assholes so he can record them for his movie, but the camera Benton was using was also used to record like their essence, and so using their essence he summons Mr. Nasty, which is really just another version of Eustace. Benton makes a reality show where Mr. Nasty just kind of like bullies the family, and for this reason, the family becomes like the town laughing stock. With a pretty elaborate plan, Courage is able to make quicksand and kind of like fake out planning to throw Muriel into the quicksand, and so this draws attention away from Mr. Nasty because Benton Taran Teller is like, oh, this is an extremely nasty act. And so Mr. Nasty gets jealous of this and then just leaves, like, I'm going to make my own show. And Benton is shoved into the quicksand by courage, and they're all set free. Benton Tarantella is probably one of the best villains in this show, even though he only appears in around two episodes, I would say. Uh, but overall, um, just the, the reality show part of this, the, the Mr. Nasty, I think is a that's dumb, fun character. And then, like, the ending where Eustace and Mr. Nasty kind of have, like, their own talk show. I don't know. It's a... Uh, it's a very funny episode. Number 29, Club Cats. This is a this is a bit of a fever-driven episode, but we're going to get through it, all right? 
So Muriel wants to go on vacation, so they book a cruise, but eventually the, the cruise ship that they're on ends up sinking, causing the family to wash up on an island where Katz owns a resort on this island. Everyone's like chilling out, having a good time. When Courage goes to buy a soda though, he finds that the vending machine that he's buying the soda from is fused with the captain of the sunken ship that they were just on. He starts freaking out though, as Katz takes, uh, you know, Muriel and Eustace to a spa and Muriel's turned into a washing machine and Eustace is turned into like uh, a wrecking ball. And from here, uh, Katz is shown to run like a gladiatorial ring of human appliances where he forces Muriel and Eustace to like duke it out in the ring and essentially Eustace is like okay and this beats the shit out of a washing machine which is actually his wife. Courage voluntarily like goes through the machine making process and turns into a helicopter to save Muriel. And in the end uh, Eustace gets pissed that like Kat stole his chair and then gets mad and tries to kill him. Overall this episode is a uh, pretty entertaining. Uh, the whole gladiatorial ring with uh, appliances and just the whole idea of his plan being to turn people into home appliances is a, is a bit of a weird one or not home appliances just like machines uh is it's a little weird but it's it's a fun episode to say the least number 28 the duck brothers this episode starts off with muriel getting abducted by two alien duck things who uh sound like paul mccartney for some reason uh they put a mind control device on her head and have her walk into like a secret military area 51 base and then the, the people guarding the base set, let her in because she's like oh she's an innocent old lady Kurt is able to also break in to like save muriel and then is able to take back the remote from the ducks where they instead are like well fuck muriel i guess we'll just throw a hypnotizing hat thing on eustace and then this causes like a rocket rock'em sock'em robot sort of situation between uh, muriel and eustace after they fight and tie the, the ducks start like arguing with each other and eventually they tell Courage that they're trying to like save their brother and like they, they really need his help. So Courage agrees to help them and puts on one of the mind control things and like breaks in to save their brother so they can return home. There's a lot to like in this episode. Um, the duck's talking like this the entire episode as a, as a fun like weird little gag. Um, the Rock'em Sock'em Robots fight was, it was very fun and overall it has like a really nice heartwarming plot. Number 27, Dome of Doom. The family can't really grow anything out there because it's like the desert. And so Eustace is hungry and was like, hey, we need to grow our own stuff. And coincidentally, an ad for a company with an experimental new vegetable growing product uh, shows up and decides, okay, we'll do this. And uh, they build a dome around their house. And then the family is welded in shut with the pack of seeds by like the salesman dude. The family plants the seeds and like uses activate dome button, which causes like a giant storm inside of the dome. And then after it's over, they have a super lush garden, but Courage realizes like the plants are alive. After Muriel tries cooking one of them, uh, they capture and try to cook her. So Courage has to like try to save her. Courage activates the dome, the dome like activate button for the weather multiple times to cause the weather to get very cold and essentially like freeze the plants to death. This does eventually wear off though, and the plants thaw out and start attacking again. Uh, and <laughs> like they literally eat like a cow alive. And so the family gets cornered in the attic and Courage decides to use Eustace's sock sweat on the plant, um, which is apparently so corrosive, it just causes all of the plants to explode. Overall, this episode is, is very fast paced, which uh, I think is great for the series. Uh, the plants are pretty much constantly attacking or like constantly serving as a threat to the family, and I think make very uh, scary antagonists. Number 26, the Great Fusili. So this random lizard magician like shows up and rolls up to their house and asks them to be a part of like his circus act. So they all eventually come around to enjoying it. But after their first show uh, to an invisible audience, it kind of just like laughs and claps, but no one is actually there, which is a little spooky. Uh, Courage finds a room full of people turned into puppets. Fusili eventually is able to turn Eustace and Muriel into puppets as well. But to hide from Fusili, Courage hides in like a powder container and is able to eventually stand up to Fusili, who thinks he's a ghost because he's covered in powder, causing him to get scared and jump down onto his own stage, where Courage is able to grab Muriel and Eustace by the strings that Fusili gave them, and Fusili also gets turned into a puppet. You kind of feel bad for Fusili at the end, uh, but either way, he did this to a bunch of people. But overall, I think he makes for a great villain. Uh, the plot is pretty great and like the, the, there's some spookier elements with just like the puppet scene where they're all just like hanging there uh, and you could tell that they're human as well as the audience who's there but not really there uh, just really adds to the atmosphere that this episode has. Number 25, House Calls. 
A man is alone in like this sentient house and feels very lonely because he's been stuck alone with this house for many years. So he decides to play a music track that is designed to attract neighbors. Obviously because it's, you know, the show, he's able to attract uh, Eustace, Muriel, and Courage's house and then they become neighbors. But the man's house gets uh, very jealous of this. So Courage is told by Muriel, hey, if you can if you can spruce up the house maybe a little bit, it might make the house act a little better, maybe a little nicer. And so eventually they do do this and the, the house is able to be nice. A bunch of neighbors move around and the man gets like a nice ending where he's not as lonely as he used to be. Overall, uh, this episode is a really nice plot. Uh, you do feel pretty bad for the for the guy in the situation, but you also kind of feel bad for the house because it's so run down. I think they do a pretty good job making sympathetic villains in this episode, and overall, I'd say just the, the ending is, is a nice one. Number 24, A Night at the Cat's Motel. So, Cat's is back. This is actually his first appearance in the show, um, but he does appear in a lot of other episodes. So, the family is getting back from a vacation and needs a hotel to stay in, and Cat's has a hotel. No dogs are allowed inside because he is a cat, so Kurt is kind of just left outside to chill. So Katz essentially has a bunch of pet spiders and uses the guests that stay at his hotel to feed them. Katz kind of just spies on his guests, like waiting to see what they're doing, and while this is happening, uh, the spiders try to eat Courage and Muriel. Courage uses a cannon to launch himself through the room window to save Eustace, and then uses him to throw him at Katz. Courage and Cats have like a wall ball competition while Muriel is just like beating the shit out of the spiders. And uh, although Courage loses, uh, because Cats uh, like laughs maniacally like too hard, uh, he gets smacked by a tennis racket and they're, they're able to get out. This episode is, uh, is pretty spooky. There's a lot of like very nice atmospheric scary stuff that goes on. Cats, of course, is an entertaining villain as always. And I'd say there are a lot, of, especially like the wall ball scene. I don't know, it's brought back some memories. Uh, very entertaining. Number 23, A Beaver's Tail. Courage is like going sicko mode on his yo-yo when suddenly he looks outside to see that their whole property is pretty much flooded. The family goes outside to like play in the water um, for a bit until they realize that the water keeps rising and is now like flooding or drowning their house. Courage drives into town on his like little boat thing to try and figure out what the problem is, but the entire town of nowhere is it, it's pretty much entirely flooded. But Courage sees that there is a giant dam that's causing the problem. Courage climbs this dam and finds a beaver who is the one responsible for building the dam. The beaver is absolutely annoyed by Courage and uh, pretty much just shoves him off the wall. Courage tries to break through the wall to maybe break the dam open uh, with his yo-yo from earlier. He gets it caught on like a pipe sticking out and so starts making a beat that the beaver starts like clapping his tail to. The beaver tells Courage that he's always wanted to be a musician but his dad forced him to be a construction worker. Courage starts playing the beat again on his little yo-yo and uh, the continued slaps of the beaver as he, as he slaps his tail to the beat causes the dam to break down, fixing the flood. And the end of the episode, uh, the beaver and Courage become a little jazz duo. Uh, very much a big fan of jazz, and that's probably why this ranks as high as it does. But I'd say the overall plot, like there's a very eerie silence when they first see the, the, like, the town flooded. There's just water everywhere around them. And uh, the, honestly, it is, it is a lot of the jazz point in the way here. But... I do think it's a good episode. Number 22, Car Broke, Phone Yes. Courage is watching the stars when he sees like a spaceship land in their front yard. There's a knock at the door and a stranger comes up and wants to use their telephone. Courage does not want this to like happen, but Muriel is like, yeah, I'll let him in. The stranger starts to like use his tentacles to turn Courage inside out and uh, throws him in a closet while he extracts like the kindness from Muriel. Because of this, Muriel becomes an asshole who wants to hurt Courage, so Courage goes back to the ship this alien dude is from to try to get her kindness back. Courage is able to find the, like the tiny brain creature from earlier, as well as this big giant brain, who tells Courage that he wants to extract Muriel's kindness so he can understand what not to do when taking over the galaxy. Courage is able to steal back this like extracted kindness, and with the help of one of like the kindness-infected aliens, is able to escape the base and blow it up. At the end, he is able to get Muriel her kindness back, and they go home, but with like a house full of aliens, like a little little cliffhanger there. Overall, uh, I think this episode is pretty entertaining. There's a lot of like scary moments with the aliens in general. They have a pretty interesting design, I would say. And the part where Courage gets like turned inside out was a, was a bit of a scare. But uh, overall, I think the plot really does a lot for this episode. And Muriel being just like an absolute dickhead uh, adds a little bit of uniqueness to this episode. Number 21, Heads of Beef. Muriel is pretty sick and Eustace wants a burger, but she's like too sick to make him one. So she's like, hey, can Courage, can you get old Eustace to like get supplies and stuff like that? Um, because she's like worried he'll get the wrong thing. 
Eustace pretty much ignores whatever Muriel asked for and decides to go to a burger place owned by a pig man. The pig man serves them burgers and Courage, seeing a face on one of his burgers, thinks that the pig is feeding them like people. Courage finds the restaurant's basement and he hears the pig man talking to his wife about what he thinks is the idea of them eating Eustace and Courage. In the end, it turns out that they just model customers into burger sculptures and then eat them together. And the businessman who Courage found the face of on his burger from earlier, who he thought was made into a burger, is actually just alive and is kind of like chilling out. Overall, this episode is done incredibly well. The implications uh, that are kind of had throughout the entire episode uh, make it very scary and a little mature for a kid's audience, I would say, but it makes for a very good plot. Number 20, Cat's Candy. Katz is trying to win a Nowhere Sweets contest, but Muriel has won pretty much every year, I think for like the past 40 years it says. So to beat her, Katz makes a jelly monster thing to chase Muriel down in the hopes to eliminate his competition, essentially. Muriel and Courage get attacked by this jelly monster and eventually lose and are brought back to Katz's candy store by the jelly monster. Courage is able to break free of the restraints that he was put in while Muriel hangs over this like giant candy machine thing and then Courage and Cat start fighting. This eventually leads to Cats and Courage having a staring contest. Eustace, who's just kind of doing his own thing, uh, follows the candy trail that was left by the jelly monster to the food store and uses his mask to actually scare the jelly monster. Eustace is actually helpful this episode for once, you know? Courage loses after Eustace yells at him and is turned into candy by cats. Eustace, though, is able to get Muriel's boot back on her foot and then fight cats while Courage helps to, like, throw cats back into his taffy machine. In the end, Muriel is able to win the candy contest, and overall, uh, this is a pretty entertaining episode. Eustace actually helping out for once was a nice change of pace, and Cats just does his own thing and, and is able to steal a spotlight once again. Number 19, Serpent of Evil River. The gang sees an ad on TV for like a fishing cruise boat and decides to go on it. But it turns out the captain of the ship is secretly like a scary pirate dude. The captain decides to make Muriel, Eustace, and Courage part of his crew. The crew decides to sail over a waterfall into the evil river so that the pirate can capture this giant serpent called Carmen. After Courage tries to catch Carmen and it does not succeed, uh, the captain realizes that they're out of bait and so he's like, hey, we should just use Muriel as bait and so throws her in like one of those shark cages and then says, well, Carmen is attracted to classical music, so he plays a bunch of classical music through the water. The cage Muriel was in uh, eventually does get spit back out of the water, just absolutely obliterated, so everyone's like, well, she's dead, so Courage decides to jump in to try to find Muriel and see if she's alive. Eventually, uh, Courage is able to follow the music, and it turns out Carmen, the, the giant serpent, just wanted an audience for her opera singing all along. After this, though, the captain, or the pirate dude, shows back up and starts to try to capture Carmen, but Courage wants to protect her. After duking it out, uh, the captain eventually loses, and then Carmen decides to help the gang out and then take Muriel and Courage back home. The atmosphere in this episode is absolutely insane. Carmen's design is, is pretty scary too. Everything in this episode after they go down the waterfall is just blood red. Um, definitely adds to like the spooky factor of it, I would say. Overall, just a, just a really great episode. Number 18, King Ramsey's Curse. Now, I know, I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me about this, but we're going to walk through the plot and I'll, I'll, I'll justify it. So, there's two cat, dog, fox, maybe things that uh, steal a slab and decide to hide it underground before getting straight up killed by a swarm of bugs. Courage is just digging around and is able to find the slab while playing outside and decides to bring it home. The family sees a news segment where they say, oh, this thing has been stolen and it's worth a lot of money, so Eustace wants to keep it. That night, the 3D animated King's Ramsey comes up and is like, demands his slab back, otherwise he'll suffer three plagues, each indicated on the slab, which eventually turn out to be a flood, very loud music, and bugs, because of course Eustace isn't going to give it back. The episode ends with Eustace, who, just holding the slab, goes out there to confront Ramses, and then is just eaten by a swarm of bugs, which causes the slab to be returned, ending the curse. Now, as much as King Ramses is loved by a lot of people in the series, and I do think he's a great villain, outside of the scenes that he's in, and the overall spooky atmosphere that the episode has, I don't really think that it deserves to be a top 10 episode. It is still a very, very, very good episode, but I don't think that it's one of the best in the series. But it's close. Number 17, Ball of Revenge. Eustace is tired of courage and so starts calling like a list of people to have a meeting to get rid of him. Eustace meets with these people in their house basement 
where we get a flashback to a lot of the previous villains of the series, which was a nice little fun throwback, I guess. This gang of villains decides to kidnap Muriel and then pretty much jump Courage, so they do just that, chaining Muriel above a boiling pot of water, and then Courage, hearing this, goes downstairs to check on the noise, and that's when they jump in. When they're fighting, the Quack is like, hey, we should play a game of dodgeball, so the team of pretty much all villains just, like, beats the shit out of Courage with random things. After some encouragement by Muriel, Courage eventually wins by just screaming so loud that the floor of the house breaks and all of the villains fall down into a hole. Although a lot of the weight of this episode is kind of pulled by the fact that we get to see a lot of iconic villains from the series back again, I do think that as one of the final episodes of the series, it's a nice little send-off for them. Uh, the plot is really fun as well. The idea that Eustace finally breaks and is like, I am the asshole, and he's essentially kind of the main villain for this episode. Overall, the concept and everything about it is executed really well, and I think just makes it a really great episode for the series. Number 16, The Last of the Star Makers. This episode starts off in space with two alien squid things dancing around when suddenly a giant space wheel starts like sucking everything up around it. And we get this like tragic moment where the, the father squid flings the mom to earth to like save her from being uh, like eaten by this, this whale thing. And then he kind of dies and is transformed into stars. On Earth, the mama squid lands next to the farm and kind of buries her babies at, acting like kind of a nest. Courage and Muriel find her out there and try to help her, but Eustace sees her and is like, hey, I can call the government and they'll give me a bunch of cash for this, right? Um, so the government does show up and then they start running a bunch of tests on the squid mom and her eggs, slowly killing the mom. Courage goes in to reunite the eggs with the mom, has to sneak through a bunch of government stuff, but he's eventually able to get the eggs back to the mom where they hatch into babies and float off into the stars. But at the end of this, the mom does die and turns into a bed of flowers, her species able to live another day, even if she's not able to see that future. The episode is a bit sad, it feels a bit artsy too to an extent, but overall I really like that. I think that the music that plays throughout it really adds to this like melancholic nature of the episode. And although it might not be everyone's cup of tea for what they expect from the Courage the Cowardly Dog show, I think it was a great episode. Number 15, Snowman's Revenge. Due to there being absolutely no more snow in the North Pole, the snowman decides to build his own West Pole, uh, very coincidentally at the family's house, with his new snow climate finger changer thing. So the snowman just busts in and pretty much gives everyone in the family some jobs and starts to look at them like family, but soon they like freeze to death pretty much and are unable to move. The snowman talks with like frozen courage about how much he misses his friends and due to there being a rip in the ozone layer, they have melted now. Courage gets an idea from like a hot light bulb thing that causes him to be able to melt out of his frozen state and so he decides to board a plane to the North Pole, jumps out of the plane and then sews the rip in the ozone layer back together, bringing back the snowman's friends, with Courage then afterwards bringing the snowman's friends back to him causing them to leave, the family to be unthawed, and happily ever after. This episode is a pretty cool, the way that their house gets turned around, there's like a dancing scene that's pretty fun as well. Um, but the snowman just in general, although he appears as a villain at first, he just becomes a very sympathetic character. And just, <laughs> and the ridiculous part where like Kurds is like, I'm gonna sew the ozone layer back together, um, was a nice little funny comedic element to this, uh, this episode. Overall, I, I think this episode is really great. The villain, who's not really a villain, uh, is pretty great, and uh, you kind of, you feel bad for the dude. Number 14, Everyone Wants to Direct. Famous movie director Benton Tarrant Teller, who I mentioned earlier, uh, goes to the family's door and wants to film a movie at their farmhouse, and just so happens that the, the plot of the entire episode of this is the name of the movie, which is like, zombies eating people. After googling his name, Courage is able to find out that Benton Tarantella is a notorious serial killer now turned zombie. The zombie man is trying to essentially resurrect his serial killer best friend that he did this sort of dance and show with when they were living to kill people. Benton Tarantella eventually does succeed in resurrecting his friend, where the zombie actually looks like pretty terrifying. Um, wasn't expecting that. In the end though, Courage is able to steal the script of Benton Tarantella to convince them to walk back into the ground and just kind of like give up. Although there is some scary elements to this episode, especially with uh, the zombie dude rising back up again, what really pulls this episode is the, the comedic nature of the entire thing. Courage is just desperately trying to tell the family like, hey, this guy's like a serial killer. And they're like, no, it's part of the act. It's part of the act. And they will pretty much willingly uh, 
set themselves up to be killed uh, because they think it's in the script. Benton Tarantella makes for a great villain, and the entire premise of this episode is just great. Number 13, Hard Drive Courage. Eustace is sick, so Muriel and Courage work together to try to make him feel better. Muriel thinks that artichoke syrup soup would work well for him, but the recipe that she had in her recipe book is missing. Courage decides to use the internet to download the recipe, but while he steps away, waiting for it to download, uh, a virus gets downloaded instead. While Courage is away from the computer, Muriel goes to check the download, but hits a key for the virus, I guess, and gets sucked into the computer. Courage scans himself to go in after her, leading to like this really cool, unique 3D animation scene, and eventually things go back to 2D, but it's like all in binary. Either way, Courage is able to find Muriel and sees she's being attacked by the uh, like a computer bug virus. Um, turns out the bug is sick, and he will not hand Muriel over until he feels better. Courage calls the home telephone, uh, goes through the phone as like binary or something, and then grabs the vinegar jello that Muriel had made Eustace earlier, and then gives it to the virus, and it makes him feel better, allowing the virus to let Muriel go, and then they are able to get the artichoke syrup soup recipe, making Eustace feel better. The plot of this one uh, is definitely not realistic. Uh, I, I actually know a thing or two about computers. That's not how they work. Uh, but anyways, this episode's pretty great. I feel like the animation in this episode really shines. Although the villain is like kind of forgettable, I would say. I think everything else in this episode makes up for it entirely, which is why I placed it here. Number 12, Evil Weevil. Eustace is driving and hits a bug man with his truck called Weevil. Muriel feels bad, so she decides to invite him over. And at first, he's very nice and acts like a, like a butler. But... Then he starts sucking Eustace's blood until he pretty much just like crumbles to dust. At night, he continues to suck Eustace's blood, and then afterwards, the fly man starts sucking Muriel's blood. And then Courage tries to challenge him, and then they start having a bad food eating competition. Courage eventually ends up losing, but after the fly man starts to try to suck more blood out of Muriel, Courage is able to grab his like antenna thing and able to cause it so it, it sucks himself to death. Um, well, not to death, but he comes, like, super small. It's, uh, it's a pretty wacky ending, but overall, like, everything in this episode is pretty scary. Uh, the way, like, Weevil moves around on the ceilings, and the way that, like, he slowly, like, takes the life out of the family is just, uh, it makes for a really great villain. Number 11, Queen of the Black Puddle. Eustace scares the shit out of Courage, kind of like in the intro of the, of the show, and he runs outside to find a lady just chilling in a puddle. As usual, Courage tries to tell the family, but is ignored until she starts appearing in other liquids of the house, like Eustace's coffee cup, where she causes him to, like, fall in love with him with, like, charm juice. She then comes in through Eustace's bathtub, like, I wish, and then, they, they, so pretty much, essentially, the goth mommy kidnaps Eustace and takes him into this, like, underwater water world. Muriel ends up missing Eustace, so Courage, like, sucks it up and dives into the puddle to save him. But just like all goth mommies, the red flags eventually pop up, where she turns into a giant fish monster to eat Eustace. Courage and Eustace try to escape together in a actually fairly tense scene. And yeah, I just think this episode is great. The villain in this episode is scary. There's a lot of really tense scenes, especially when Courage is almost locked inside the underwater area with the fish lady. And... Yeah, it's just, it's just a great episode. Well, we finally cracked into the top 10, and number 10 is Demon in the Mattress. The family needs a new mattress, so they order one from like a, a rattress company, essentially, who brings them this spooky haunted mattress. A ghost inside the mattress decides to like, go up Muriel's nose and starts possessing her, doing like all this weird freaky stuff, and Courage, obviously, wants the ghost to leave, so he does like a thumb war, but fails, and eventually he's able to do some sort of like fancy exorcism that he found on the computer, and uh, is able to get the ghost to leave. Man, I, I really simplified the plot here, but this episode is pretty terrifying for the show. There, the, the ghost here has a very like spooky, scary voice, does a lot to just freak Courage out, uh, does like these weird movements and stuff like that. I don't know, I think the villain in this episode really does a lot and is one of the better episodes in the series because of it. Number 9, Courage in the Big Stinkin' City. Muriel gets invited out to New York to play some music with her sitar, and when they get there, they realize that the main entrance is locked, so a, a very not suspicious bug man decides to let them in on the side of the building, down to like this torture chamber that he has essentially. Courage is the only one that's really not oblivious to this, so the bug man leans over and is like, hey, you deliver this letter to somebody for me, or I'll hurt Muriel. Courage is sent to a scary apartment complex where each door is a new monster, where we get a very, very scary, I'd say, like, claymation scene with this violin lady, and pretty much all the doors are scary, but this one really scared the shit out of me as a kid. 
Courage gets to a secret evil package, and then the cops start following him because they realize that he has this evil package. And then to try to lose the cops, Courage hops in, like on a train and then accidentally scares the driver with the evil package, causing there to be no driver. So Courage tries to take over for the train and accidentally sends it off the rails, uh, coincidentally breaking into the room that Eustace and Rio are trapped inside of. The chase eventually breaks out, causing the bug man to chase them up the train, where he eventually gets captured by the cops. There is a lot of freaky things going on in the episode. First of all, the bug man, his design in general is just, he just looks gross. And then obviously the, the apartment scenes where Courage goes door to door is uh, probably some of the scariest stuff in the show. But we'll get to worse things in a bit here. But overall, combined with the plot and all these scary elements, it just, it felt very unique for a kid's show. And it was really what I was looking for for the rest of the series. Number eight, The House of Discontent. This episode starts off with some pretty standard house haunting stuff. The creepy voice telling him, like, oh, fuck off, get out of my house, or whatever. But while Eustace is taking a bubble bath, he breaks through the floor and coincidentally just takes Muriel and Courage down in the basement with him. From here, we see one of the scariest things the entire show has to offer with this very scary face called the Spirit of the Harvest. The spirit demands that unless they grow something within the next 10 minutes, uh, they're pretty much going to die. So, while Eustace and Muriel argue in the basement about Eustace's inability to farm, Courage goes outside to try to revive a plant that they had earlier. After Eustace and Muriel start to melt to death after it's hit midnight, Courage uses their sweat that is literally boiling off their body to water the plant, and the plant is eventually able to grow, making the spirit content. I don't think I have to say that the face that they have in this episode is downright terrifying. Like, even for someone like me, it's just a really freaky thing to look at. This combined with, like, Muriel and Eustace, like, melting to death and him trying to kill them, along with, like, the tense 10-minute timer that they have going on, it just makes this episode very scary in general, and I think contributes to it being one of the best in the series. Number seven, the magic tree of nowhere. After the gang gets some random seeds in the mail, Courage gets them like thrown at his head, but he's like, hey, I'll grow these seeds. Uh, and they pretty much instantly grow and then start granting wishes for people. Eustace gets jealous of the tree's intentions and unintentionally wishes Muriel's head to be bigger. The tree has a very creepy face and starts talking to Courage, saying he will help cure Muriel, but he will be cut down in three days. Eustace is determined now to cut the tree down and becomes a Viking, attacking Courage, who builds a fort around the tree, and when Courage goes to get Muriel's medicine to help her, he returns to the tree being cut down. The tree, despite its scary appearance, comforts Courage, seeing that he's sad, and tells Courage how to cure Muriel. This episode and the plot around it are overall really just great. The The face on the tree is absolutely terrifying, but he's like a, he's not even the villain of it. It's essentially Eustace as the villain of this. This tree just looks kind of spooky. The defense and back and forth between Eustace and Courage as Courage tries to defend the tree is also a pretty fun part of the episode, and the melancholic nature that it ends on I think really adds to the emotional hit this episode has. Number 6, The Hunchback of Nowhere. An old gremlin man looking thing is looking for a place to stay, and pretty much everyone turns him away, including Eustace. After being turned away, Courage finds him in the bar and playing bells, and they end up playing little bells together and doing little circus tricks, becoming really good friends. Eustace does not like the hunchback, so when he's let inside, they start dissing each other like a, a little rap battle back and forth. Well, Eustace actually has some uh, pretty creative insults where the hunchback just keeps calling him bald. After the hunchback and Courage put on a little show, Eustace goes to the barn roof that they're at uh, to try to insult Courage, but the hunchback stands up for Courage, scaring Eustace off the roof. After seeing the conflict that he's caused, the hunchback ends up leaving, but overall it's a pretty happy ending, I would say. This episode is really like a nice, just wholesome episode. It's nice seeing Courage like have a really good friend and it teaches kids lessons like, uh, don't judge a person for how they look, which is the reason I don't show my face on the internet, right? But yeah, this is a great episode. Number five, Freaky Fred. Muriel's nephew, Fred, is coming in town to visit, but the dude is like batshit insane. Courage notices that there's something definitely wrong about the dude, and is eventually locked inside of the bathroom with him to get his hair cut. The entire time, Fred's got rhymes like dimes, and he is just spitting bar for bar, telling about all the people he shaved in his past, which, in, in the context outside of the show, makes it seem like he's talking about all of his victims, but in the context of the show, he just, like, gives people really bad haircuts. While Courage is getting all of his hair shaved off, like, locked in the bathroom with this maniac, there's, like, creepy music going on in the background, like, flashes of, like, previous victims of Fred's, but the cops do eventually show up, but man, this episode is 
freaky pun intended it's, it's a really good episode fred as a villain is probably one of the series most iconic people know him even if they haven't really watched this episode but yeah it's 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 great number four the mask kurt is outside with muriel while she's picking eggs and in the distance he notices that there's a creepy white robed figure in a doll mask walking up towards him and then just the, the lady just started beating the shit out of him Muriel lets the lady inside thinking that she's one of Courage's friends, where she tells her like really tragic backstory and then also just continues to beat the shit out of Courage with random objects. At night she kind of is stalking the rest of the family, and when she's alone in her room it's eventually revealed that the lady in the mask is a cat. Courage tries to tell the family about this but can't, so he steals the cat lady's mouse toy so he can report it to the police. Courage goes to a diner to learn about Kitty's old friend named Bunny who got involved with a bad group of people. Courage kind of feeling bad goes to the dog gang that he heard Bunny was in and finds Bunny is being held by a gang of dogs. They kind of like, and it's not even really like hinted at, it's kind of just shown that they just abuse her. Courage goes to try and save her and is able to get her out of this, they put her in a pot for whatever reason, where he beats the shit out of two of the dogs that are in the gang, but the main one, also Bunny's boyfriend, I guess, Mad Dog, chases them and Courage literally uh, steers him into a train. At the end of the episode, Kitty and Bunny are reunited on the train for their definitely not lesbian relationship. This episode kind of cheats a little bit because it's like a 30 minute long whole segment, but for that reason, the plot of this episode is really well fleshed out. The characters in it are scary. It deals with like some real life, just like bad situations. And in the end, things do work out, but man, this, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a real one. Number three, The Tower of Doctors are Lost. Now, first thing I have to mention is that I'm actually combining the two parts of this together. Um, it's essentially kind of like the last episode, but there's a part one and part two specified. This episode starts with a very cinematic bombing of a city, which is music in the background as you just see a city being pelted by bombs. And to give us some context of what's going on, we get a backstory revealing that Dr. Zalost went to the government trying to sell off his bombs and or kind of threatened to use them in a way, but is turned away. The bombs that he is using on the city make people very unhappy and lazy. And while everybody is too lazy and unhappy to do anything about the crimes that he's committing, Dr. Zalost takes all the money from the city bank, thinking this will make him happy, but at the end of the day, he's still very unhappy. Back at the family house, Eustace is very upset because he can't get his newspaper, so he drives downtown to grab it, but there's no one there, and thinks that the people are too lazy to make it, not realizing what's going on. Eustace sees Dr. Zalost Tower while driving in the road, and honks at it to move, getting Dr. Zalost's attention, causing him to follow Eustace to the home. Dr. Zalost uses little rat friend to start bombing the family's house. Eustace is immune to them because he's already so unhappy and miserable, but Muriel gets hit while Courage hides and is eventually able to escape. Courage tries to take care of Muriel, but she's too tired and lazy to really do anything. Courage decides to hatch a plan to get a cure from Dr. Zalost, where Eustace dresses up as a delivery dude to deliver pizza while Courage sneaks in inside of the pizza box. Once inside, the rat assistant starts chasing Courage around, but is eventually hit by one of the bombs, turning him into a humanoid rat mutant thing. Courage, having some of the happy plums that Muriel had made earlier in the episode, flings them at the rat, which turns it into a baby. At this moment, though, Courage is snatched by the doctor and is put at the end of one of the cannons, saying he'll let him free if he can guess a four-letter word before it goes off, hangman style. So eventually it turns into like Wheel of Fortune where he's like, do you want to buy a vowel? And Courage eventually is able to guess the word. Boom. Dr. Zalost does not keep his promise though and tries to fire the bomb off on Courage, but Courage in this process is able to throw the happy plums that were able to cure the rat earlier into the acid bat, making them happy bombs, I guess? And then the bombs start just kind of like flying everywhere, hitting everybody back in the town, hitting Muriel, and eventually Dr. Zalost eats some of the happy plums and is able to finally be happy and return to his normal self. This episode I'd say is probably a bit goofier than The Mask, but in terms of the plot that they have going on, they both are really neck and neck. Both are absolutely great two-parter episodes and, in my opinion, are some of the best in the series. But we have two more to get to. Number two, Remembrance of Courage. Courage is waiting at the dinner table for one of his favorite meals when he pours himself a glass of milk and notices that there is a missing dog poster on it. This causes him to have PTSD flashbacks to when he lost his parents. Eustace and Muriel take Courage to the vet because he really just stops doing anything. But the vet that they take him to is the same vet that took Courage's parents. From here we get some more background scenes where we found out that Courage broke into the back room and eventually saw his parents get launched into outer space. And just like in the past, the doctor takes Muriel and Eustace to the back where he throws them inside of a rocket and for the second time Courage is about to lose his parents. 
In the past though, when this had happened, Courage was able to escape by jumping down and shooting the rocket, but at the same time leaving his parents. But it's because of this that he was eventually able to find Muriel. Over the course of the show, for everything he's been through, Courage has built up enough courage. He's really earned his name. And so this time he's determined to not let the same thing happen. And after some back and forth, is eventually able to shove the Doctor back onto the rocket himself, pulling Muriel and Eustace out and sending the Doctor into space, where he lands on the planet where he has sent all the other previous animals that had attended his veterinary clinic, including Courage's parents. From there, uh, he gets the shit beaten out of him by all the dogs, and then we get one final flashback to when Muriel first discovered Courage. In the scene, it shows how he got his name, and despite feeling like he failed in the moment, at the end of the day, he was able to still find a loving family and find people who saw him as courageous. This is one of the final episodes of the series. It is the second to last episode, and you can tell because they did not pull any of the punches on this episode. This, this entire episode is just incredibly sad. The themes in the episode are very heavy, and the Doctor himself brings the scariness that the series is known for. This episode is insane. It is it's sad, it is tense, and you really just do feel bad for Courage. But at the end of the day, there was a happy ending at the very least, and he was able to save his family. But man, this episode hits hard. Number one, perfect. After fucking a lot of things up, Eustace hires a teacher who kind of starts haunting Courage, telling him that he is not perfect. The teacher demands a lot of Courage, to the point where he starts going insane. He can't sleep, and each time Courage eventually kind of drifts up, he's woken up by some very genuinely horrifying animations that are probably like the scariest things in the series. Um, I know this one in particular gets people, but... Eventually, after being insulted and terrified enough, a fish in a bathtub uh, visits Courage and tells him that he is perfect in his own way and that it's perfectly fine to be imperfect. Courage walks out of the bathroom to Muriel and Eustace being imperfect and realizes that he is happy with how unique and imperfect he is. He finally visits the teacher one last time and after asking him to draw a six, he draws an incredibly intricate number six, causing her to freak out for something so abstract and melt into the floor. The final scene of the show is them all eating around a dinner table together in a very imperfect manner, all with their own flaws, but they are content and happy with their lives. Courage smiles at the camera and we get one last wink and a thumbs up from the fish from earlier. This episode genuinely kind of hit me in the feels. Um, not to get like too deep or analytical about things, but it doesn't seem only like a message to the children at home watching that it's okay to be imperfect, but as a message for the show in general. Despite the largely flawed amount of episodes or episodes people might not have liked, the show, despite its singing Valkyries and annoying ass baby versions of characters, was in its own way perfect. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning into this video. I'm surprised uh, you're all still here, but I appreciate it nonetheless. I'm a little sick right now, so sorry for the change in voice, but this show is one of my favorites. And I will be honest, after watching and editing this for the past month, I think I'm going to need to take a break of it. But at the end of the day, opinions on this stuff are subjective, and I think a lot of the episodes of the show are all generally speaking pretty good. But if you've heard anything you disagree with, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to respond. And of course, special thanks to this month's patrons. Mads, Dave the Unknown, Griff, Einar Anderson, Tumeric, Maddie Grady, and The Commenting Cat. It's because of these lovely people I am able to sometimes make a little less than a dollar per hour on this channel. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I appreciate all of you for sticking around here till the end. It really does mean a lot. And until next time, have a happy Halloween and take care.